everybody, and welcome back to another episode of Vampire the Masquerade, the Transylvania Chronicles, here on Dork Tales. I'm Kelly, I'm your storyteller, and uh, I'm incredibly excited to be back here. I use he and him as my pronouns, and folks, we have a fun night for you. Uh, a lot of blood drinking, a lot of mayhem. A quick reminder that this game is intended for mature audiences. There are going to be instances of the aforementioned vampirism, blood drinking, murder, talks of murder, violence, and more. If any part of this game does not sit well with you, uh, please take some time away, give it Give yourself a moment and uh, come back when you're feeling ready. We'll wait for you. Besides that, if there's anything particularly egregious, I will give a content warning before it comes up. Although this episode is far more tame by comparison, uh, with the exception of all the vampire stuff. There's plenty of vampire-y stuff. So if you've seen it in a vampire movie, that, that's pretty much the, the limit tonight, I think. Um, anyway, uh, that is my content warning for you. And uh, before we begin, let's say hello to our cast, starting with Robin. Hello, I'm Robin. I use she, her pronouns. And uh, so does my character, Tereza, for now. Uh, <laughs> Zemisi are very known for being quite gender fluid because they can literally do that uh At level so, five you but... can turn into gender fluid huh which is just blood but oh okay cool uh yes uh i am playing teresa dinescu our vavoid vavode i want to say is it vavoid or vavode mm -hmm. you pick okay it's vavode Vavode. Vavode. Yeah, that sounds Vavode. right, but Vavoid sounds so fun. <laughs> uh, but yeah, she is great. She's an old lady. Uh, and uh, it was a lot of fun last game. I really love You're this character. You're going to have even more fun this game. Else. I'm so excited. Nice. All right. Next over, we've got Chris. Hello, I'm Chris. Uh, I use he, him, or they, them pronouns. And uh, tonight I will be playing, reprising my role as Rinald, the fallen priest, vampire, the Sombra, trying to reconcile all of that together and just making a mess of it. Oh, I'm sure it'll be fine. You know what else it's... is going to be fine? Bastion. Hello. Um, my IRL name is uh cal i'm neo cal in the chat and uh yeah i'm playing bastion the uh malkavian uh jester type and uh they're uh they're gonna they're gonna do some do some stuff do some stuff with the vampire do some stuff there is no cal there is only bastion <laughs> look at me i am the bastion now <laughs> Just reminding Thank you, you. <laughs> you're giving me Overwatch you, flashbacks now. Um, all right. And then next to you, of course, we couldn't run a World of Darkness game without Jen. Hey, I'm Jen, and I use she, her pronouns. And uh, Eliona doesn't care so much, but she basically uses she, her pronouns if she knew what pronouns were uh, <laughs> beyond just, you know, words that don't really mean much to her in the long run. Um, and I am our, uh, gangrel. <laughs> Yay. Yay. So, uh, we're going to be hopping into game in just one sec, but before we do, I want to do a big thank you to our sponsor tonight, Bookworm Games. We could not do it without them. At Bookworm Games, you can get more than 170 different types of dice, including, but not limited to, their World of Darkness inspired gemstones. This is one of their Amethyst Mage the Ascension inspired dice uh, that have led me to great victory against the mages uh, in my Victorian era game. Uh, Robin is sporting the Bloodstones, which that one is nowhere near as pretty as they actually are in person. Uh, they are fantastic. Uh, okay, I will find. I'll find, find, find the best you one. better. Pretty you can get more than 170 different types of dice there from liquid core to resin to wood to those beautiful, beautiful gemstones. And what's best is if you go there right now, you can get that exact dice for 15% off with code DORKTALES. Go check them out. Every purchase you do reflects well on us and keeps them a happy sponsor so that we can keep making these games for you. 
Thank you, Bookworm Games, and plenty more about them soon, because not only are they doing dice, they are doing publications soon, and I've been hired to write a couple of those. So uh, more about that as it comes. Uh, besides that, um, does anybody have any questions, comments, or concerns after last game? No, just excitement. Nice. Yeah, well, th yeah. thanks, I'm everybody. Buzzing for... all week. <laughs> Thanks everybody for all of the wonderful comments that you left on YouTube and for everybody who's coming to watch us in Twitch. It really does matter. And uh, I read and glow about every single one of them. It's it's lovely to have a game reviewed this positively by our, our viewers and our fans. And uh, I hope that we make you proud with Vampire. Uh, that said, uh, we should probably start game because I've got a lot of horrible things I need to do to you. So um, without further ado, uh, let's hop into Vampire the Masquerade, Transylvania Chronicles, episode two, The Request. <clears throat> Once more, you are in a labyrinthine basement down beneath the city of Past. There you have been summoned by an unknown patron at the will of your sires. You find yourself in sign of this room, having escaped a mob, having escaped a madman, having outwitted a ventru and started a riot. As soon as you enter, your sires are in the basement. Yours, a fae-like adolescent bastion, takes a step forward, giggles, and puts your human companion to sleep. One of you catches her, lowering her to the ground. And it is that point that another person steps forward. Bastian, your sire is here. Eliona, your teacher in the cult of Valas, is here. Renald, your sire is present. A man steps forward. He is strongly built, with hair beginning to gray. In my mind, I picture him not so much... So he's a man with heavy brows, deep brown eyes. I picture him as a graying-haired John Hamm. Right? Very strong, very masculine jawline. Lantern of a jawline. And he steps forward and smiles, his fangs bared, but not hostile. He bows to you. Welcome. Hmm. It is good to have you here. Please, make yourselves at home. I am Makea Zardescu, Lord Protector of Zardrev Castle. You are my guests, and I invite you. Please, slake your thirst. He gestures. And across the room, you can see that there is a sarcophagus at the back of the room. I'm going to accept his hospitality and head towards the sarcophagus. The sarcophagus is open, and as you approach it, you see that three young girls, somewhere in their teenage years, are lying at the bottom of the sarcophagus. Servants, you imagine based on their clothes, which are threadbare and clean, but simple. They look at you with broad blue eyes, unblinking. Their breath is hollow, but steady. They do not appear to be at all afraid. Please help them out and enjoy yourself. You are most generous. Thank you for your hospitality. And I will reach in and try and help them out. One of the servants, one with dirty blonde hair, will reach up and 
accept your hand. Her lip trembles slightly, but she remains calm. And she climbs out. Can I get you to do me a favor, actually? Can you make me a perception and empathy roll? Perception and empathy. At a difficulty of seven. Uh, two? Two. Too, um, you're going to see that as you pull her out, you will notice the lip tremble and we'll see that one of the others inside of there is completely calm, placid, but little tears are forming at the edge of her eyes. But she looks placid, calm. I'm going to help. How many were there? There are three. I'm going to help all of them out. Good. Um, when the last one's feet, bare and clean, touch the ground, you can smell a little bit of lilac on them and a little bit of oil, as if each had been cleaned before being placed in. Your host smiles and says, Neil, please enjoy yourselves. I shall tell you of my request while you dine. He raises an eyebrow and watches you. What do you all do? Uh, Yona just stares directly back um, and just doesn't say anything, but is looking impatient. The, the last one out was the one that was kind of teary? Yes. Okay. I'm, I'm going to just take a single point of blood um, from that one. And then close the wound and maybe just step aside. Hmm. Please. You traveled all the way here. I would hate for you to go hungry, my friends. I prefer to hunt my own food. I do not dine on young women. Can you make me an intelligence and etiquette roll, please? I can try. All right. Intelligence. I, I'm okay. guessing I don't need to. <laughs> no, you are flat refusing. And yep. you are, but you are a, a wild woman. You kind of have a little bit of latitude there. I have one dot of etiquette because I took it last game, I think. Oh, you thought it wasn't going to come up. What? Oh, my thing? No, thought, I knew it was going to come up. Wasn't, well, and you thought etiquette wasn't going to come up. Oh. Uh, Difficulty of six. Uh, six? Cap. Uh, two successes. Two successes. Um, how are you going to spin this? Because this is, you're refusing your guest's offer of food. Or, pardon me, your host's offer of food. This is especially in in Eastern Europe, a huge thing, and especially among Azimisi. Yeah. She is going to look and go, I prefer to feel the thrill of taking a drink from Pray that deserve it. Who I can rid their filth of the world slowly, one by one. Make me... I have been in their situation, and I have. I do not wish to put them through it. If you respect Make... my. Make me a manipulation plus empathy roll. 
Oh, pardon me. <laughs> no, let's say let's do manipulation plus etiquette, actually. Okay. She's saying that she likes her food dirtier. As if do I, I would have known that, I would not have cleaned them. Six. Oh, uh, what's my difficulty? Six. Uh, I didn't botch, but I failed. Uh. He will just look at you, and his eyes will be completely just dark pools. You think he responds emotionally, but his face is blank. He judges you for a moment, and then turns to Bastion. Bastion, what do you do? Uh, who's the hardiest looking of the The three? second one that was pulled out is a bit of a chubbier girl. The, um, her face is very full, her bosom is pressing in to the front of her shirt, um, in quite a, um, quite a voluptuous way. Um, she looks hardy. Yes. Tries it. Uh, rules question. Yes. For, because I think I'm getting, I'm, I think I'm defaulting to mage in my head. Um, mm -hmm. when we use an ability, so if I wanted to throw up my aspects too to try and gauge his soul and his true feelings, mm -hmm. Would he know that I'm doing that? Auspex, usually not. Well, so with Auspex 2, um, when you're using hmm. it, it takes a minute to do it. So just picture someone looking at you across the room and goes like this. Okay. So that's all the notice he would get, though, is that you are staring oh, yeah. at him. Now, in this case, staring at him is probably pretty normal. <laughs> okay, because, yeah, I'm wondering because, like, it... Uh, Auspex says it's like a reflex of things, so I didn't know if that it meant is. it's instantaneous or you have to like concentrate. And it you have to concentrate bit. on um, on aura perception. You have to concentrate on it. You have to make a roll, uh, but it's yep. reflexive, meaning it does not take an action. Okay, uh, then yeah, Trezor will probably stare at 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 the, him for a little bit to try and sure. then um, try and gauge his soul. That said, as well, uh, before we get too far in, I should have mentioned this at the beginning for viewers at home. Uh, in order to prevent us from derailing conversation with constant, you know, I have dark vision, I turn on uh, my aspects, uh, we are going to default uh, when it when it's just a subtle use of it or an implication to say that, uh, say, Teresa is using it in an area um, to be able to see in the dark. Uh, we're going to use LARP hand signs. Uh, so in live action play, that usually means a pointing at your eye or something like that and obfuscate um, there are a couple of them but the easy one for our stream is going to be simply just putting a hand in front of your chin um, if you were listening on podcast later I will make sure to define when aspects and obfuscate are being used in the context of the story um, but uh, it's not going to be super relevant unless I say it is so that yeah, happened. I just said. wanted to check now just to make sure I wasn't going to like do a poo poo suddenly like oh how dare you I'm sensing mm -hmm. you're using magic, kind of like how a mage can kind of sense. Yep, yep. good call. Absolutely. Yeah. So I didn't want. I I know Teresa would not do something that would immediately get like look so, bad, but Robin was the, questioning. The other thing for you to know as a player is that vampires generally have an issue uh, with having active disciplines used on each other. Um, it's generally a bit of a faux pas. That said, you can't prove aspects happen. So, <laughs> Auspex yeah. is easy, Dominate is hard. Yeah, yeah, I figured that would be kind of like a, hmm, maybe not, but I was like, hmm, can I get a vibe check? And and if you uh, use Auspex and break somebody's Obfuscate, well, they were using Obfuscate, so obviously they're the problem. <laughs> they were exactly. first. They were now that, first. Now, that said, I want you to do me a favor and roll Perception and Empathy difficulty of eight, and I will come back to you in a moment. So, Perfect, Bastion. thank you. I'll take a single blood point from the hardier one. Best to be polite, after all. Her blood is delicious. And, Reynald, the blood that you drank flows over your tongue 
like the most sweet vintage that you've ever drank from a communion cup. Both of you enjoy yourselves immensely. Gain a point of blood. And as you are drinking, Robin, you got two tens? Perfect. So mm -hmm. so that'd be two successes total. Two successes. Um, so for one, his aura is pale. He is a vampire. Um, and you are going to see that it is actually a pair of colors. It is two colors that are kind of shifting over each other. They are... Uh, let's see. What are the best ones? Uh, kind of a, a, a dark blue. Mixing with a bit of lavender. This mottled dark kind of sea color merging together. I am trying so to scroll to the page, at... sorry. Totally. <laughs> So for, for ease of operations, I will just read it to you this time. So it looks like a mix of not necessarily suspicion, but definitely something akin to it. He's hmm. observing you closely. I would say judging more than suspicious, but mixed with a conservative calm. For you, this reads like a test more than anything else. This is a gauging of character. But you're not sure how well you did. As Bastien licks the wound shut, he smiles. Hmm. Welcome. Perfect. Well, as I said before, my name is Mercea Zardescu. And I've asked you to join me here in order to offer you a great opportunity. Your sires, he gestures to those in the room, have assured me that you will be happy to assist me and thereby secure for yourselves a comfortable future. I wish for you to travel to the eastern border of Hungary, to the region known as Transylvania, high in the Carpathian Mountains beyond the city of Bistris, lies a natural mountain gateway called the Tehuta Pass. As the main access to Transylvania from the east, it holds a strategic importance. My request is simple. Travel to the Tehuta Pass and erect a fortress there to guard this important trade route. My lord, if the lovely Lady Illuminata has already said that I will do this, my acceptance is merely a formality, and I would be honored to help you Most with this. Excellent. Eliona narrows her eyes and looks at her teacher like, you volunteered me for what? <laughs> she looks at you impassively, blood streaked below her eyes in ritual color. I... My, my note said that this was a friend of my sire, correct? Yes. Okay. Your sire referred you directly to this. Yeah. Although they are not in attendance at this meeting. Mm-hmm. Hmm. Do you have any questions? Might I have your word? My lady. Bastien. Well, of course. <laughs> Good. I'm willing to advance you certain sums of money to cover the cost of hiring guards and skilled workmen. But my allies he gestures to your sires. Assure me that you have enough resourcefulness to complete the work yourselves. 
Since you will be taking charge of the lands in nearby villages, you may tax the peasantry and use their labor in your building as well. Luckily, the foundation is already there. There is an old wooden tower that once stood on the spot. You should be able to utilize the stone foundation and build upwards from there. With that in mind, I expect that you should have the first floor, at least, completed by winter. It is April. What do you know of issues? Hmm. Obviously, the there was... Hmm? I was saying... If... I am sorry for interrupting, but... There's... Not. With the foundation before, there was obviously... Previous... It appears that dwellings. the previous... Yes, and it seems that they were burned to the ground by some altercation. Nothing that I'm sure that you can't handle. I've heard of your fun in the square tonight in past. Interesting. Had I known your particular dietary preferences, Lady Dnesku, I would have served German mercenary instead of young girl. I managed to find a bite to eat earlier. Yes, I know. Fear not. No one will miss him. A vagrant. A mercenary from the other side of the Rhine. His corpse will be used in planting the onion fields. Hmm. Thank you for your hospitality, my, my lord. Hmm. Again, apologies for declining your generous offer. But I promise we will make it up. Of course. Oh. Before I forget, there is one last thing you could do for me. Matter of little import to anyone but myself, I imagine. It has been rumored that among the ruins of the tower there might be some uh, old writings. Documents or tablets in forgotten languages. Should you locate them, I desire them for my collection. Frivolous, I know, but... Such pastimes often alleviate the occasional tedium of our eternal existence. Uh, please advise me if you find these writings, and I shall send an agent to collect them from you. Should you hear of other such writings and learn who has them, I should also offer my gratitude for that information as well. Hmm. Of course. Good. Well, succeed in all these tasks, and I and your sires shall be most pleased to offer you, as candidates, to rule several fiefdoms in Transylvania. Four of the seven cities known as the Siebenbergen currently lack princes. Young Canites who prove their loyalty, intelligence, and ability to rule shall, well, shall find that we are not miserly in our rewards toward you. And so, you all agree? Without Do I question. have a choice? Staring directly at her teacher. <laughs> her chin moves left to right once. Fine. Of course, of course, my, my lord, I, m might I inquire one question before we undertake this, this endeavor? Mm-hmm, of course. What can I do for there you? was a rather loud and boisterous, hmm, 
individual gathering quite the mob out in the streets. Hmm. I think he was dead like us and had a terrible uh, beard. And Yes, I've heard of this man. Octavio, I believe he is called. A traveling a soothsayer. Soothsayer? Of you, you and mentioned... your sire's blood. <laughs> oh, I, I could tell. I... You wouldn't happen to know... of what he spoke of in regarding to Eight omens. Eight omens. It seems to me like it is never more than a few years before someone starts spouting prophecies of Gehenna. Mm. I would think nothing he, of it. He mentioned one other thing before reciting... A hymn of the dead. I... Most likely in order to make me feel comfortable and welcome. He did mention something about the lies of Zowlet. Hmm. Yes. The fallen one. I... I'm unfamiliar with what this is, but... He told me to be wary of this. If you ask me, it is likely a warning against the Tremere. Those damnable thieves stole the blood, transmogrified themselves into canites using the blood of lords. And then they murdered an entire clan. Are they allowed like... to do that? <laughs> <laughs> I guarantee, should one of the Tremere set foot inside of Zemisi-controlled Carpathia, it will regret it. But not for long. Then again, I imagine that there are several other Vavodes who would relish the opportunity to share a bit of misery with them. Hmm. So, we are in agreement then. Hmm. Of course, as I said earlier, accepting was merely a formality. Wonderful. Well, absolutely. The servants that were sent to fetch you are now your property. Use them as you see fit. In addition, you may have three enclosed wagons of the four. I will also provide you a contingent of six guardsmen, each gould, and enough librum to pay for the initial costs of hiring stonemasons and carpenters. Also, I suggest that you stop in Bisteris to see Radu's castle. Prince Radu has a, um, an elegant stonework castle that could be of great insight for your own building. Um, what do we know about Prince Radu? You can make me an intelligence and politics roll. Yes. I would... One. One? One. Oh, well, he's a prince. Hold on uh, intelligence and <laughs> politics. Two. 
two. So three, two successes. Huh? Okay. Uh, so uh, he is a Zemisi. He is the Prince of Bistria. A um. Well, he's known as a a bit of a brilliant diplomat. A um. Has an, he has a, um, a reputation for diplomacy and um, has begun connecting many of the Zemisi of Eastern Europe together. He is very, um, very skillful and um, he is known for playing other princes off of each other. But he is he is a Zemisi, so you do have an inroad. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. This is excellent news. Please enjoy yourselves as much as you'd like. I would suggest that uh, you stay another night if needed, but head off as soon as you can to get a start. I wouldn't worry about going too quickly. The Carpathians are just beginning to melt. Going too fast would be a waste of haste. Hmm. Well. I have to say, I am very, very pleased with the way that tonight turned out. However, if you'll excuse me, the night grows long and I grow fatigued. Enjoy yourselves and spend time with your sires before you head out. I will make sure that the funds are delivered to my servants. Uh, excuse me. To your servants. The soldiers will be waiting for you at your encampment outside. Good luck. I cannot wait to reward you for your hard efforts. With that, he smiles and bows. And turns. exiting the room and leaving you with your sires. As soon as he's, like, on his way out, she doesn't even wait for him to fully clear the room. She is stomping over to her teacher. Why am I here? Can I... How do you expect her to sound? Um... I mean... This is this is where it gets odd, because she is Dimitri, so she can sound That's however fair. she wants. That's fair. I don't really She's have going... any expectations she's going to open her mouth and as she does you are going to see that the lower half of her jaw splits down the center all the way to the nape of her throat opening into a y configuration as she speaks her tongue splits along that as well little segmented suckers along it to allow her to lap blood more efficiently Do not take that tone with me, she says in a rasping no, voice. I have no reason to be with these canines. And I had no reason to teach you, you ungrateful whelp. You will go there because it is the will of the gods to bring you there. To bring the old ways to the eastern edge and protect against Moorish invasion. Lest the Muslims ride in and convert the rest of what is here after the damnable Christians. She glares at Reynald. You are a wall of blood and thorns and teeth against the on-crumbing encroachment of another one god. And you will do it because there may need things to be killed. Fine. <laughs> yes, I will. Good. Go. And you will be rewarded. Do this well, and you will have a hunting ground of your own. I have no use for 
this. This is temporary. You serve. But you serve as a wolf. You are no domesticated bitch. Nor does our host believe you to be. Good. You diminish yourself with such assumptions. Make sure the weaker ones survive. Da. Da, das bedania. Or whatever, whatever, whatever dialect fits. Something, something in there. Something, something. I don't um, actually speak Hungarian. Or no. Romanian. Or, uh, or Slavonic. Slavonic. Slavic. Or do I? Yeah, Slavonic. Whatever. Um, that was not quiet at all. <laughs> oh, I bet not. I bet no. not. Therese is just like, care who hears this. <laughs> Therese is just kind of standing in the corner watching because all of you guys have your sires, but hers is not present. So she's kind of just like that person mm -hmm. at the party that's like, okay, I will uh, look at my feet. Uh, hmm. You you may also be just out of, out of something to think on. You may be slightly confused why the gang girl is, is like with... The oh, no, she's <laughs> definitely paw. Like she's looking oh. in like... She's child. definitely, like, wondering. <laughs> cool. She looks over at you. I've heard of you. You were the one whose sire was meant to be and was felled. Are you not? You are correct. I had no love of him. But he was blood, and his death was an unfortunate blow to the clan. Every lord, every lord of the Carpathians that can raise a sword against the Tremere is welcome. I'm glad to see that you survived. How do you feel to be returning to Transylvania after so many years? It is like... You may have forgotten. I am not sure how long it has since you last drew breath. But the thought of coming back to my home is like coming up for air after being under the water for far too long. That feeling of drowning and suppressing. Suddenly being home, be smelling that air. And I intend to embrace it even further now that I am better. forward to seeing what great things you may accomplish. Across the room, you will hear a bit of tittering. <laughs> oh, Bastion. Your sire says to you, taking a step forward and feeling the side of your clothing, Bastion, he smiles at you gives you a once over mm. oh you're just looking perfect i love what you're wearing i wish you'd washed it a bit there's still a little bit of blood on the collar mm. i assure you i washed it last week <laughs> um or i assume the one i found this on did wasn't blood on it then. Hmm. Well, who doesn't have a little bit of blood on the edge of their hem or on their boots? 
Oh, I can't wait to find a material that resists it. Hmm. Are you all finished with your, um, meals? I he turns. think so. And Adrojai, the high priest of Kretuva, looks down at the girls. Now, this man is physically 16. He grins with a demented gleam, and his eyes shine like emeralds, or perhaps particularly well-shined peridots. He has long red hair, a thin angular face, and long limbs. As he smiles, you can see wheels turning inside of that damned skull of his. Hmm. <laughs> well. Waste not, want not. Just a moment. Come to me, my pet. Come here. Come to me. He waggles his long fingers, and the chubby one crawls forward. Good girl. Roll over. <laughs> she does so. Good girl. Bark. She lets out a bit of a... Arf, Arf. <laughs> oh, what a good girl. Play dead. And he lunges down and bites into her throat heartily. The sound of slurping fills the room with... And he pulls up, his mouth stained with red, the color of his hair, turns back and smiles at you. Bastion, are you sure you don't want to top up? Well, I... I do like that one. So... Mm. You could... not completely... Well, I... <laughs> Pardon me, High Priest. You can, do, you can do as you wish, of course. I do do as I wish, but I wish to offer my, my bouncing baby boy a bit of a bite. Was it not I that nursed you from my bleeding nipple? Nay. Perhaps my teat ran bare. Oh, you wayward waif. <laughs> Oh, well, I wish to give you a sup on mother's milk. But perhaps I was too late. You were already full on the milk of another. He smiles and looks around the room. Ah, I've lost oh. my appetite. And he throws the girl back onto the ground. She lands with a crack her head bouncing off the stone and is bleeding. He didn't bother to lick her throat. She's just seeping it out of these puncture wounds. Bastion will go and uh, follow up Sire's mm. work, but uh, just close the wound and uh, so how many cradle points of blood her head are you taking? to see. Sorry, go ahead. How many points of blood are you taking? Uh, I'm not, um, oh. but I'm cradling her head to see if she was hurt. Sure, make me... Do you have medicine? Medicine's a thing. It's under your knowledges. I do not. I should probably okay. get... Okay, so, I mean, she's... She doesn't have any blood. She's got a big goose egg. Oh, so okay, assuming so that, like Assuming he didn't her drain was... her too much. No, she's not, like, gushing blood. Only from the one spot. And as you take a look at her... He's going to smile and start to rub your shoulders with his small, delicate performer's hands. So tense. Hmm. Do you think they know? He whispers in your ear at stage volume. Do you think they know? I didn't tell him, but maybe he could have seen through. I don't know. I don't know. Is who... Hmm. Do any of them, do any of them know exactly what you are going into? The fires that will come? Good job. You asked the perfect questions to throw the dogs off the trail. I did, didn't I? 
You are such a good boy. He pinches your cheeks and shakes your chin. Oh, oh my beautiful boy. He kisses you full on the lips. Leaving a smear of this girl's blood. Good. Good. I'm so proud of you. And then spins on his heel and walks over to Leona and Teresa. And my, you're quite wild. And my, you're quite old. Ooh, but there's a brutality beneath those wrinkles. And there's an age beneath that smoothness. Hmm, twinsies. You're quite young. <laughs> It's only skin deep. Like you will be someday. Yona uh, leans forward and, like, sniffs. He smells like blood and... flowers? Like his clothes are stuffed with them. Hmm. And who are you? I am Athrojai. Bastion's papa. Yes. Hmm. You know, speaker of the Fae. Master of mirth. High priest of Kutuva. Hmm. None of that means anything to me. Fair. Well. I frolic in the moonlit nights. Naked, except to smile in a blade and dance with the fairies of the glens and the mushroom circles that are not too far away from those old stone temples and shrines that your lot leave in the woods. Big respect. Much respect. And I hunt those foolish enough to find their ways into the woods. <laughs> well... Should I find my way into your woods, then I expect you to hunt me, if you can find me, oh great hunter. But I'm a little tricksy to find. <laughs> hmm. Meanwhile, across the room, Chris, your sire, describe her. Um, she is a, uh, uh, Lissetta Luminata is her name, and she is, uh, a nun, um, and dressed appropriately, uh, masking a, in, like the, uh, clothes masking an incredibly beautiful woman. Yeah, she's originally from Aragon, so she's definitely has, um, blue-black hair. Um, that is tucked, of course, inside of her habit. Uh, but she has violet eyes that are heavy-lidded and seductive. A heart-shaped face exhibits both nobility and voluptuousness. She's dressed in a habit of a nun of St. Anne's. She bats her eyes at you. I uh, smile as I approach her. and just like, I hope that was sufficient to make you look good. Hmm. She bats those heavy lids at you, looking almost bored. I suppose. I suppose it was... good enough. Although... How do you think you could have done better? Mm, yes, like that. 
It's too late, though. We will just have to work with what we have. Please tell me, dear Reynold. Will you disappoint me? No, in no, Transylvania. Of course not. No. I want to believe you. This is this is all part of the the bigger plan, right? And you think God has a place for you then? Of course. He may. But <laughs> you will still need to please me. I am not nearly so <laughs> I'm not nearly so charitable our lord and I expect you to work hard she reaches up and her fingers are immaculate her nails slightly longer than the tips of her fingers tapered to a needle like edge she runs the tips of those nails along your jawline through the thick of that little the little bit of stubble that regrows every night that you have to monitor, which is so hard without the use of a mirror. And she traces it down your chin, right to the little cleft at the front, and lifts it. You will succeed. Good. I was right to embrace you. And then she gently cups your cheek with her soft, perfect hand. Just, uh, she has appearance five, by the way. I'm just going to put that out there. Uh, here's an actual picture of her. It does not do her justice. I suggest you Google her instead. Can you put her name in the chat? Yeah, for research purposes, can you put <laughs> her name in the yes, chat? For, for research, research purposes, purposes obviously. Um, so it's Lisetta Illuminata. If I might. You, um, you told me of the, uh, the courts of blood. Yes. That doesn't apply to others, does it? Just within think? the clan? So if a uh, certain Ventru were to go missing in the city before we left wouldn't be a problem hmm. anyone who would go missing well they would have to find the culprit first and it seems to me that so many canines come through here it could be anyone. It's a shame, really. Hmm. A Ventru, you say? Well. At least it's not something useful. She smiles for the first time since you've entered. And then you hear a knock at the door. It opens, and once again, you see... Hadel. The servant with the lantern. Hmm. 
It is time for you to go, my child. <laughs> it's time for you to go, my bouncing baby boy. It's time. I tire of the cellar. <laughs> Therese is gonna walk out. Okay. <laughs> That's my line. <laughs> Just... I'll follow. All right. Trans is like, no one's telling me to go, so I'm just going to escort myself. I Thank need you. no. I want to look towards Bastion uh, as we're about to leave. and um, You're cradling the, uh, uh, the the woman that your sire had. It's like, are you bringing her with us? How did you know that was my plan? Was I that obvious? We better feed her some blood so she doesn't get in the way. Do you want me to take a look at her? I I am very. You I, would. I know I know the body well. I can I can give Abe give her a check. See if she is going to need further care. That crack that her skull made when she hit the ground. I'm quite concerned. Oh. Please do. I was not expecting such understanding from my new friends. Please. You can absolutely make me an intelligence and medicine roll just to examine or a wits and medicine roll. If you're just trying to do a general diagnosis, like a quickie. Yeah, uh, either. Uh, intelligence and wits are the same for me, so I Perfect. will do that. Do it. Uh, yeah. What is my difficulty? Your difficulty on this is going to be seven. She has very thick hair. Holy smokes. My bookworm dice are on fire fire with the tens tonight holy i didn't roll any other success except for the two tens <laughs> beautiful <laughs> i need to buy a specialty in medicine or something. she's gonna be oh, fine yeah. but she um she probably should be fed blood and awakened pretty quickly you know that there is a trauma that overcomes people with head injuries that can make them confused or perhaps cause them to be seized in the night during their sleep and taken to the god You should feed her blood soon. I know of head injuries that can lead. They may seem fine, but will lead to our gods easier and faster than we want. I've never done this before, miss, but um, we'll do try to... I'm doing this for your own good, you see. And I'm gonna cut near the wrist and put it in her mouth. Even unconscious, her tongue will lap over the cut and she will drink. She will drink heartily, like a babe to a breast. She clings to you and almost drunkenly claws at your arm. How much do you feed her? Oh, jeez. Uh, she gave me one. I'll give her two. Okay. Uh, now, normally a, a ghoul cannot have more than one point of blood, but she is a bit banged up and will reflexively spend a point immediately to heal, leaving the other one in her system. And as you do that, her eyes, which are large and brown and cow-like, are going to flutter open and look at you. I'm sorry. She averts her eyes. Oh, sorry? On my behalf? No, not for Bastion. You... I don't suppose you'd like to stay here over accompanying poor Bastion 
in his travels? I would go wherever you wish. I Excellent. Would go wherever you wish, my lord. Oh, I'm not a lord, but you may call me Bastion. I am, um, I'm Rosalia. Come along now, Rosalia. We, we must be making our way. Yes, I, I will come. The other girls watch her as she leaves. Lady Teresa. Yes, Ronald. This might be a bit uh, presumptuous of me, but um, do you think perhaps you might wish to feed along the journey? We were left with two others that, uh, well, might go to waste in there. And he'll actually, like, try and get close if you let him and just very quietly whisper. I've seen meals that have been refused, slaughtered, because they did not meet the uh, levels of the guest. If you are looking to keep them alive, it might be worth taking a small drink every now and then. But that, of course, is up to you. Teresa and Robin <laughs> both are pausing and fighting some some inner some inner stuff right now. Uh, hold on, let me read what my flaw does when I try. <laughs> okay, please do. Uh, in the meanwhile, don't forget that your other Sherazina. Yes is still here as well, lying on the ground in state, propped up against one of the walls. I may not... I can... Ha are the two other women unconscious right now? No, they are kneeling, their eyes wide and staring forward, like... They remind you of cattle that have been either drugged or bludgeoned or had their wills broken. They've been domesticated, made docile. Likely, you imagine, by either Dominate or by the, um, the third power of animalism, which you would know of, the one that strips the will mm. from mortals and animals alike. Have either of you known the comfort and bed of a man? I'm going to roll for this. Uh, let's see. Uh, number one, let's say um, higher low is good for virginity. <laughs> a low for the because it's less less amount of less amount of sex, I guess. Okay, I was gonna I'm going to say this time period. <laughs> say I'd say it's probably like a 70/30 chance that they ha that they are virgins, so I'll say that an mm -hmm. 8 9 10. So okay. a new world of darkness success is a uh a the, the first one with the blue eyes um mm -hmm. shakes her head no and you believe yep. her. The other okay. with the um kind of tawny brown eyes um looks up at you. And, uh, you know what? I'm going to spend a hurt the... There's been a drama bomb on that. Okay. Uh, she is going to look up at you and... And is going to nod very slowly. Come here. She will rise from her knees and approach you. Teresa will take a drink out of her. Perfect. How much How much do you have in your system that you can, or how many blood points can you take? Well, that's what I was wondering, because to, to ghoul someone, 
I'm full up. <laughs> when I did my murder, oh. I was full up on the tank. Oh, yeah, then just give her a, give her a point of blood and then uh, then drink it back. Cool. That, that I didn't know if you had to do a certain order or not. So no, not even remotely. Perfect. Teresa uh, will do that. So Teresa will. Hmm? If she's completely empty, then she comes back as a vampire, though. Yes. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, Teresa will uh, take a just very gently bite her wrist, her fangs, and offer it to uh, the the girl. Uh, she will drink, and then at the end of it, uh, will demurely look up and say, "My name is Cece." Welcome, Cece. I will take care of you. She nods. Donke, my lady. You hear a throat clear by the door as Hadal looks. <clears throat> His lantern swinging. Um, oh, you'll know we'll just pick up Sherzina if no one else is going. Just, just. Oh, you know, not making the ghoul. She's just picking up Sherzina <laughs> and Perfect. bringing her away. She's like, mm, body. <laughs> body. All right. Yep. So. She seems to be pretty loyal to us without having to do the whole. Ghoul thing. I mean, well, ghouling so. gives them superpowers, which is nice, but yeah. Oh, yes, that's but get true. have opinions about ghouling, so. That's uh. true. You'd rather probably ghoul an animal, first of all. Yes. Because, mm. you know, dogs with potions Dogs are, are better amazing. people. Dogs are better people than people always. All right. Hadel leads you back through the tunnels and up the stairs back into the alley of the city. As he does so, he takes you to, to a house on the western edge of the market square and gives you a key. You can stay in the cellar for up to two nights, as you need. After that time, you would likely need to be on your way. Of course, Master Renard. And with that, he opens the door to the cellar for you and leaves you in peace. Is the floor of the cellar dirt? Yes, it is. Okay. So we have two nights up to two nights. I don't think it's a wise idea to leave somebody with a grudge. Not on us. I'll look it's over like at uh, Eliona. You're reading my mind. And say, <laughs> you are a hunter? I am. Have you ever hunted a Ventru? She looks like she's actually considering. She's like, I don't think so. But there was one who screamed and didn't tell me who he was. Well, let's give you a, that... a great challenge in the city, <laughs> though. I'm sure that'll be fun hunting grounds somewhere new. It's going to be different. But hopefully not too difficult. You have two nights. We have two nights. Say, so, and some allies. It's always good to hunt in a pack, right? Yeah. Out of character, just quick question. Yes. Does he mean we have the rest of tonight, a day, a full night, a following day, and then we have to leave? Uh, he means that you have, uh, it says, they may stay in the cellar of the house for two nights. Um, That's super useful to vampires who are there at night, <laughs> right? <laughs> yeah, this is true. This is like hotel issues. Um, yeah. How many nights are you staying here? Is it two days, three nights? Is it three nights, two days? What's going on? Uh, you may yeah. spend the rest of the night planning and giving orders to your new servants, and spend uh, and rest in the rooms the next day. So you have uh, t the rest of tonight and the next night. 
is the way that I'm okay, kind of cool. reading this. Yeah, yeah. So we have that's that's how I read it too. But one more. night to hunt and GTFO and do stuff and yeah, yeah. Okay. And it is about uh, I'd say after that meeting you met at ten. It's probably getting close to one o'clock in the morning now. Excellent, plenty of time. And it's April, so what dawn would be kind of around six or seven, seven. six or seven yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. you'd want to be back here by five thirty or six at the latest yeah. okay <laughs> truly if there's dirt i'm fine <laughs> but everyone else should be back here by five thirty or yeah. six that's fair <laughs> that's why i that. checked what the floor cellar was <laughs> You uh, you take your newfound ghouls and blood dolls and etc. down into the basement. And then you go out on your hunt. Yes. Which is something that we'll probably want to do after this quick break. Folks, don't go anywhere. We'll be right back with the Transylvania Chronicles. Everybody, welcome back. This is the part of the program where we're going to talk to you, the chat, for just a minute. Uh, so, hey, hope you're all doing well. How are my vamps doing tonight? Doing well, doing well. Very well. Good, good. 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 Super good. I love seeing yeah. uh, all of these lovely people in the chat. And hey, those of you watching on YouTube, this is for you. There's been so much love on the, the channel. There's like this 36 is... comments on the first video. We're like 880 something views episode like zero a thousand. Episode one. i think episode a lot one. of people a lot of people oh, don't run v20 anymore most of them have uh mm -hmm. have switched over to v5 which is fine we're not edition war warriors here um but there's something kind of nice about the retro engine you know and like especially for dark ages plus i mean you guys look amazing oh and with my new camera the the color of this this vest looks a lot better. Say, so we look... can we can see all the the deets on that that vest way better. Oh, right! Holy I don't crap, just look yeah. like human Shrek. Hey, you, he... hear me out. Hear you. Human Shrek was pretty hot. He was pretty hot. I know. I I <laughs> I, I appreciate I... it. <laughs> now I'm checking myself out. I'm like, yeah, human. Oh, Shrek. so episode zero has 962 views. Like, Ooh. episode zero is almost going to be a thousand. Noise. How about, how's episode one? 880. 880? All right. Mm -hmm. um, Beautiful. Beautiful. My uh, partner just finished making uh, this part. Oh, you've got a like, traveling you know, head. I had the jester cowl. Oh, she made like even... a. Um, and then, like, the hat. She. She's making, like, modular parts. That's awesome. Oh, nice. That's great. <laughs> Oh, and um, in lieu of my like favorite picture, medieval um, art, you know that one lord of the dude uh, with the blue hood who's holding his cat and he's wearing a cat hood. Yeah. Everyone knows that like that piece of art, right? I've shared it like ten times. I'm gonna, she's gonna put um, <laughs> like little ears or something on it. <laughs> Just as did like donkey, like type mm -hmm. ears, right? Like they, they kind of. So. Do they Some just to pin the tail on jesters? That seems that's, like something they would have done. That seems... Boy, that's a question. Yeah. That's a question. Try to catch me. I... Come on, <laughs> catch me! <laughs> oh my god, Kelly. Like, again, just the, how you what? do NPCs. Just like... Oh. Oh, Why? What'd I do? The, What'd I do? The, just oh. the, the change between... Adrojai. Oh my god. Adrojai is great. I love him. 
I love oh, him. Like, like, what would I, what if I take a little bit of the Joker, 11. a little bit of Kefka from Final Fantasy 3 yeah, 6, yeah, yeah. and then yeah. like I toss in a little bit of, of how Cal's playing his character, and then boom. Yeah, it was going to be yeah. like, it's like Kefka, and you worked off how I was playing Bastion. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Just, all, just do all, that emotion again, them. Kelly. <laughs> like, yeah. Is he skiing or is he in a, yeah. is he in a gay porn? Yep. I could be both. <laughs> I could be skiing Why in a gay both? porn. You never know. Yeah. yeah. People apparently right. like the hot nun. The hot <laughs> nun. Oh my gosh. I, you know what? I was like, I was like, this is going to come off really bad, like really poorly, or it's going to come off like I am a sexy nun. And I, I hope that I give up for, from me. You came off like <laughs> a sexy nun. Because like literally um one of her role-playing hints is um i don't mind sharing this it's not a huge spoiler but it's you are beautiful beyond words and you know it use it make use your use your hard to please nature like a weapon oh my god and i'm like all right done done i'm oh, just gonna play was, Catherine zeta jones that was yep. not how i was expecting their relationship to be i wasn't 100 percent sure what it was like but uh that was fantastic <laughs> Like, I was like, Thank you. oh, okay, this is what's going on. I'm in, I'm in danger. I'm in danger. <laughs> um, so yeah, uh, a bunch of really cool stuff happening on the channel soon. Uh, tomorrow night, we have another episode of Changeling the Lost. Uh, so if you <laughs> haven't seen the first one, it's ran by our guest storyteller, Simon K. Um, then on Friday, I'm taking a night off. And then Saturday... Yeah. Uh, we have the Radiant Citadel back over on our YouTube via Patreon. So if you're on the Patreon, and if you're not on the Patreon, guys, get on the Patreon. It's it's the it's the cool place to be. I commend you the goal. Especially the this Patreon. weekend. Yeah, this yeah, freaking because, frame. Uh on Sunday, we start the day off back on Twitch with uh Dreams of Arcos, the return. And I finally I asked all of you, like, hey, can I get like uh, I asked all the players, can I get an update? What do you need from me? Like, what do you like? I think it's really important to check in with your players when you have like time breaks and be like, how you doing? What would you change about the game if you could? What do you, what would what would you not change? Right? And then everybody just didn't say anything. And then one player I had a meeting with, and they're like, it's not hard enough. I want to feel in danger. And I'm like, oh, that's what I needed to hear. Good. I'm not in that game. I was going to say, that's a very Chris move. I believe, I feel but... like that sentiment, that sentiment was, was echoed was in it? the Arcos chat. I believe, yeah, I believe we talked about that. Is it? The, all the right, then I'll chat. double all my challenge ratings. Um, and uh, other other hard things are going to be great because that night, um, Jen, we, yeah, I know, right? Uh, we finally get to go back to uh, Technocracy Zero Sum. I finished Heather Seeking. <laughs> Who's is better? <laughs> I'm, they're both so different that it, it's right, not even comparing. Uh, but yeah how we end how i'm i'm it's fine it's fine it's gonna be it's gonna be great it's fine it's everything everything's good. fine everything is awesome everything is cool when you have a ret three all right it's not did true. you just say a ret uh, three it's a ret I, it, it's arete but like a ret is just the quickest it, it fit in the rhyme scheme better yeah i know, you gotta, know but it just it sounded yeah, so wrong in my ear it really <laughs> did yeah Arette, it hurt a ret stop no yes <laughs> yes stop, stop. all right uh, what else do I have to tell you? Uh, some really cool stuff. Uh, there are, uh, so like I was saying before, I'm writing a bunch of adventures for Bookworm Games. They're going to be fantastic. I'm very excited. And I actually am pulling in uh, a, a couple of pirate expert friends of mine to review my materials because they're pirate based. So that's going to be a lot of fun. Um, so uh, besides that, uh, what else do I have to tell you? Um, did I tell you guys about the the weird emails I was getting? I told some of you, right? I think I told Robin. So I was um, getting. You okay. told, you, yeah, you told us. Uh, oh, uh, it was during Mage. You mentioned mm -hmm. it too. I did. Okay. So there's something really weird about that. That that I should I should I mention this here or should I mention it off stream? <laughs> anyway, so I was I was getting these weird emails yeah. that were like. They were like it seemed like they were fan mail, like encouraging me to run another werewolf season. 
uh, and they were to my Dork Tales account. To, like, I have a Dork Tales Gmail or email. You can find it on our social medias and stuff. It's it's our contact email for for mostly me, but like it's pretty easy. It's at dorktales.ca because we're Canadian and .com. They wanted to sell me .com for like four grand, and I'm like, nah, I'm good. We'll be a .ca. Um, so I received a bunch of weird stuff, but other people have been receiving it as well. Like it seems like other content creators. Um, like huh. uh, rolling no Nom- rolling nomads, a couple people from them have received it. So I just figure it's probably just spam, right? So so I blocked them because I don't I don't mm. have time for that shit. And and because whenever I get an email from from Dork Tales, I always like go, ooh, is it a sponsor? Ooh, is it a is it a friend? Is it a collab opportunity or something like that? Um, mm-hmm. so I got another email today to my personal Gmail from the same person. <laughs> So I don't know. I think so it's a little bit. Either that or it's someone pulling a prank. So I don't know. Um, but I'll post some more info about what I saw soon. So check Twitter. I think I'll share it on Twitter because that's where everybody's seeing it. Um, they might be fishing with ChatGPT. I don't know. It's weird. But anyway, I just thought it's it feels very world of darknessy. So hey, we'll all share there. Um blurg. Um so anyway, that that's my week. Anybody else have anything interesting they want to bring up? I'm gonna drink some coffee. I have coffee. a new computer. Oh, that's Yay. exciting! It's currently transferring files over, which uh, I'll to see if my computer lags a bit. Uh, I've noticed a couple times my screen has lagged out. Uh, it's it's at five percent done now. <laughs> Copying my files Yay. over. Three hours. Mi- three hours left. <laughs> um, I'm I'm really hoping, and I'm hoping that by saying this i'm gonna hold myself accountable because i actually have time to do it uh i'm hoping to get the next episode of paradox out this friday yeah. finally By the way, i actually finished you, almost finished writing it today <laughs> if you are not following jen's uh jen's podcast you need to do so mm. at uh paradox uh a mage the ascension podcast i have an announcement too actually Ooh. yes i'm gonna Especially once, oh, what game? I'm tempted on Fridays, because I have a half day at work and I don't have anything planned. I'm tempted either Fridays or like doing it potentially like Saturday if game gets canceled. I'm going to start streaming. You're going to do it? Vampire the Masquerade Bloodlines on yes. Twitch Yay. and play through that. So Ooh. I'm gonna get back into streaming a little bit on my personal stuff. Not super often, but you should also I was upload load to YouTube. Up Vampire. Uh, I guess yeah, I do have a channel technically. I do. Yeah, do it. But Vam- yeah, Bloodlines gonna, is gonna fantastic. Now, which of the clans are you gonna play? I don't know. Don't start so with Malkavian. Don't, don't don't start. I with started with Malkavian. Don't start with Malkavian. So did I. And don't. St- and don't start with Nosferatu and, because the game's unplayable. Mm. Oh, okay, good to know. Well, you can't go out in public. Their second run. Oh, plans. yeah, their their second one run. Their second one. Yeah, okay, okay, okay. Uh, so Malkavian, basically, it's just nothing. Nothing in the dialogue makes any sense, or anything cool. you read is makes any cool. sense at all. Perfect. Stop signs scream at you, and like newscasters yeah. speak directly to you. Yep. It's pretty huh. funny. Okay, so that is a definitely a second. Insight. That's definitely a second run. Or you yeah. can just like try it and see, and you'll understand what we say, what we're saying. Yeah. Also, <laughs> it spoils yeah, the I'll plot. Try. Oh. If you play, if you play it, so it spoils good. the plot because, like, if you're at all intuitive or know the lore at all, which you might get it off easy, but like the game point blank uh-huh. just tells you the plot in crazy language. So if you if you can parse it out, you're like, oh, it's really Indiana Jones that did it, and you're like, what? That's not that. Hmm. I that could be as much as like people are like, don't do it the first time around. That could be really interesting to see it, on stream somebody's first time as the Malkavian being like, what the fuck is this? Like, it is harder. Yeah, it yeah. is harder mm-hmm. because you're playing someone with just obfuscate, and uh, it's it's honestly why I've actually never played through it. <laughs> Yeah, I, I would say I, yeah. I want to see your reaction though when you get to the mansion or the museum. The boat's I, a waste of time, and so's Chinatown. But the, the other two are good. No, no the, the mansion <laughs> was just uh, that. Was I want to find out what she does with Heather for a long mm. time. 
Mm -hmm. But anyway, I'm really looking forward to seeing that, Robin. I think it'll be rad. <laughs> Thank I think you. We, I'm very we, excited. We need to get you like a cool World of Darkness background. Ooh, I can get you that condo with the rain video for you to put behind you so that you've got like spooky Ooh. rain. Yeah. yeah. Spooky rain. Spooky yep. rain. Yep. All right. I was just going to say it. You're going to say it. All right. <laughs> cool. Out of my head. No. I pay rent okay. here. This is, I'm going to okay. put my feet up and wear my shoes inside the house. No, take your shoes off. No, you, we, nobody can dirty up your mind more than it's already dirty. I think we have a venture to kill. Yeah, we I do. We Let's go kill a venture. Let's, Let's go venture kill a venture. Let's venture to this venture. All right, folks. It's time to head back in to the part of the game I was not expecting here on Dork Tales. Players. That's okay. I found his stats, so this is going to be fun. Um. All right, so... Without further ado, let's head back in to Vampire the Masquerade, Transylvania by Night, here on Dork Tales. Welcome back to Vampire the Masquerade, Transylvania by Night, here on Dork Tales. You begin your hunt across Pest. As you're making your way through there, Eliana, can you do me a favor? I would like you to try to track this man. This will be an extended success to try to hunt Roland down. However, you have seen a few of the places that he frequents. Yes, Renault. Um, So I know that he's the master of slaves for the city from the uh, politics mm -hmm. check uh, last game. Um, is there another check I can do to find out where, where he does frequent or where other sort of slave market type places are that he might have his not uh, off the top of your head okay. but if you want to go look around and try to uh to make some headway through different means potentially yes well i, I will meant like he is the master of slaves so we can ask i think the first thing is that well like teresa will definitely ask uh sherazina about if she so knows you, you waken her there in the uh in the cellar She bats her eyes. I'm sorry, I fell asleep? What has happened? My lady, I apologize. I hope that wasn't too rude. No, it was... It was pertinent that you were not witness to the conversations that were had between our kind. Then I am then I am thankful that I fell asleep then. What can I do for you? How may I serve you? We are wanting to find Roland. He was Do the... you know of any other locations where their slaves are kept or bought or whorehouses? That he might frequent? With the... Um, with the troubles that miraculously happened at the auction block, I imagine that they would probably, if he needed slaves, he would have to go back to... There is... If there is a basement... More like a pig cellar, an abattoir. Uh, uh, oubliette? My French is not so good. But down over by... Um, I can show you. It is near... It is back across the ferry. Perhaps... Uh, I would like uh, you to remain here. Of course... Then in that case, from th from the auction block, you will head west for two streets, north for four or five streets. It is a large building made of brick. It is dirty, and the outside of it smells like piss. There is a weather vane on the roof, a rusty one that squeaks in the breeze. It has a, an animal, a, um, how you say, a cock? 
Sherazina. Yes. My we, lord. Mean to ki- we mean to kill the man. If there is anything else that you can tell us, now would be the best time to do so. The man who takes care of the slaves there is named Bruno. He is a big man. Very, very strong. Very fat. He, um... They ask all of the women that come whether or not they are, um, chaste. And, um, those who are still virgins fetch a higher price in the market. Bruno has access to this list and knows what he can enjoy without angering his masters. There are many there who are less fortunate than I. I would like to see Bruno suffer, but he's very strong. I would bring a sword. I would like to feed him to the dogs, personally, and let them let them tear off. And she says a little bit of vulgarity in her in her home language that the rest of you can determine is that she wants to see the dogs eat the sausage. Are you sure we can't take her with us? I would hate for Roland to try and use her again. Mm-hmm. I would be willing to be bait. No. There is no need for bait. He would likely be there speaking with Bruno, trying to pick up the dregs. He has done so before when the the auctions were not good and the girls were not ripened. Or when when some of the menfolk that were captured had not healed from the wounds that put them there. They do not like putting any on the auction blocks that have visible wounds. It drives down the prices. So many are kept down there while superficial wounds heal. I would say he would be around there. I know when he comes by. Sometimes, because I can smell the perfume. Hmm. This, this, the sandalwood. Yes, it is distinctive. Well, I should... Perhaps the city's rat population can help. I was just thinking of the same thing. I tend to prefer Mm. corvids, but I feel like there's more chances of rats being here. Yes. And Therese is going to start chittering in... (laughs) Oh, you're not just going to say, you know, I I cannot summon them, but I can speak to them if... uh, I shall summon you. And Robin, do you have animalism three or two? I have two, so I can call the wild. All right, let's call the wild. That's going to need a charisma plus survival roll difficulty six. Mm -hmm. And don't forget, you can spend willpower. Yes. 
um, because the uh, size of your successes is the size of your summoning. Mm hmm. Charisma plus survival. Mm hmm. Ooh, right. That's to call them, not to ask them to do things. I have high mm -hmm. animal can, not great survival. All right. Unfortunate. Yeah, that's what willpower's for. Exactly. Uh, which I'm definitely spending. Uh, I will power there for success. Uh, okay. What is the difficulty? Difficulty six. Okay. Uh, charisma at three dice, starting with a success though already. So that's nice. <sighs> Okay, so three successes. Three successes, is that with the willpower? Yes. Half, half of the, of the animals, animals, and yeah. that is inside of the local area. Uh, mm -hmm. my, might I ask you a question real quick? Mm hmm To get to this place, you do have to take a ferry across the Danube. Are you going to wait until you cross the ferry before you yep. summon the rats? Okay. Yep. Because you don't... I, I don't know if you can afford to take them on the ferry. I wouldn't need to take them on the ferry. I just... Rats can swim. Yeah, yeah they not really very can. fast. But I'm not taking them with me. Or at least I'm not. <laughs> I'm asking them for information. <laughs> oh, sure. Yeah. I mean, yeah, I'll, I'll call them. It's not... Uh... It's not... Uh... It's not like I give anything. All right, sure. Like blood, uh, so so I with can that, keep, I can there is going to too. be, there's going to be a rush of motion, and you'll hear scrabbling outside of the cellar door. As well, you'll hear squeaking, and the rush of bodies begin to fill through the cracks in the basement. Dozens upon dozens of rats become visible, and you can hear the sound of the cellar door ahead. Above you, go battering like a full-grown man is beating on them. Is anyone going to open the door? Come in. <laughs> I mean, I think yes. you need to open it. What's the secret password? I'm going to back up and try and get into a dark corner and stay away from what I think is coming. Elyona gets down on the ground, actually, like, kneeling down, preparing for the Before swarm. they have a chance to react, I will swing the cellar doors open. Okay, so I'm going to do a quick calculation. <laughs> <laughs> Average like how rats in the city block. Half the animals. <laughs> uh, right? So, let's see. So, uh, the population of Budapest uh, in the 1200s. We're going to drown. So, uh, the it's the scene from Indiana Jones three. But okay, more. so in 1500, Buddha, so across the way, had about 5,000 inhabitants. So, let's say that at this point in time, the population of Pest has mm, 2,500. So, uh, let's divide this up. Let's divide it in. Uh, you said half of the animals in the region. Uh, cool, cool, cool. Uh, then that'll be uh, 1,250. Let's divide it a bit down further because you are on one side of the Danube. Uh, so that will separate them further. So we are down at, uh, what is that? 500, uh, 625. Okay. Uh, 315 rats swarm through that through that opening into the basement, turning earlier. Eliona wondered whether or not the floor was made of dirt. No longer. It is now made of rat. The swarming, teeming bodies fill the floor. The entrancement that had been laid upon your two new ghouls snaps, and they shriek and climb aboard shelves nearby. The rats swarm around Teresa's feet like a whirlpool, some of them climbing up her robe, some of them climbing on Bastion. One of them sits atop his hat. 
The rats look up at you, their noses twitching, their whiskers bristling in the dim lantern light of the basement. What do you do? Um, if, if Teresa talks to them first, um, I can also talk to them. And so I think between the two of us, we're going to try and get information out of these rats. <laughs> yeah, see if any of them have heard of this bill, especially like describing like the smells and... That sounds good. The, mm -hmm. like, probably, it's probably a very warm place and there's probably food left. And there. the man himself. The vengeance. And the so, man himself. So here is the deal right now. Um, are you making animal sounds to do this? Yes. Yes. Okay. All right, so here's the deal. I need you both to make me a, we're gonna do this as a accumulated successes roll. That's gonna be manipulation plus animal can. The difficulty is going to be six for a rat, uh, plus one difficulty because you have no eye contact on 300 rats. However, <laughs> Fair. Uh, it is going to drop to five because you are making animal noises. Oh, pardon me, uh, it's gonna drop back to six for animal noises. Cool, okay, cool. I'm gonna spend a willpower as well All right. on this again. Sounds good. That is three successes at nine. Beautiful. <laughs> well, I have... Two at ten. <laughs> one at nine. <laughs> Including the willpower, four successes. Four successes. Okay, so seven successes between you to interrogate 300 rats. <laughs> yep. <laughs> yep. <laughs> Of all the sellers, of all the rats, 350 so, of you had to walk in mine. So I'm going to say that you can ask, uh, each of you can ask two questions just automatically. Cool. Um, I don't know how to phrase this necessarily, but it's kind of like, do you recognize the, the description of this man? Like, we're looking for this man. Have you seen him? Smell? Ten like, tonight. Smell. Food? Food. Smell. Man. Yeah, I w will provide, like, scents and stuff that I got off him. The rats will titter at each other. No, 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 no. Yes. Yes. Man. Stomped. Rats. Laughed. Dislike. Can you help we, us? We wish yes. to stomp him back. <laughs> we wish to yes. stomp him back. Food? Yes. Food? Food? Safe? Food. Safe. Gray. Gray. They all look at one rather large gray rat that is about the size of your forearm. Teresa will hold out. She will lean down into the rats and she will um, hold out a hand on the ground to, to welcome. This the large leader. gray rat, um, a dam, will walk up onto you. Um, her belly is swollen. Her, her nipples are obviously, um, they, they stick out enough to say that she has had, she, she has been a brood mother many times, um, and crawls up onto your arm. Yes. Babies hurt. Revenge. Hurt man. We plan on hurting the man. And you can help us too. Help. Gray help. I am grateful. The rat gives you a demure expression. As much as a rat can give. Mm-hmm. The rat is willing to guide you to where she encountered this monster. Excellent. 
Right. Do you uh, Pied Piper your way out of here? <laughs> yep. <laughs> Rats a toe. We'll follow your lead on this matter. Just uh i'll try not to step on any rats and uh, <laughs> let us know how we can be of assistance i'm not particularly good at hunting myself yet but uh, i do wish to learn okay so moving mm -hmm. out into the night the rats will flood out onto the streets quickly finding their way into alleys and grottos and other low-lying areas in the castle district these rats are healthier than the other rats you may see around the city. Most of them, at least. And before long, you make your way down to the ferry. Pulling the chain across, or the man who's stationed there pulls it across for a pittance. And you will soon find yourself once more down in the lower streets. The rat will guide you gray and soon you are finding yourself in the blood-stained market square the cattle yard square i should say that you were in before so can you please do me a favor Elyona, and make me a perception and survival roll at a difficulty of uh difficulty of five i'll say with the rat helping you Cool. Um, I'm going to spend a willpower because I'm Sounds out as good. well. The rat will be your compass. Boy, don't we look... So is it, was it just the gray that followed us? Yes, or did any just, of the just gray come? is riding just in gray? your hand. Okay, perfect. So because I have the survival specialty in tracking. <laughs> uh, yes, tens, tens will explode. And they did. Uh, <laughs> so much better than with the will two. <laughs> with, with the willpower, I got seven successes. Okay. Um, it's what I'm here for. <laughs> that sandalwood you... is very potent, apparently. Uh -huh. It very is. Um, so... Following that, you will find not only that, but well, you will find that scent hovers in the air. Using your Witcher vision, you're going to be able to follow the walks. Uh, but also, you are going to see that a pair of lovely boot prints, the type that only could be afforded by someone who could not live in this area of town. This squalor? No. Not with a boot this luxurious permanently impressed in a pile of horseshit in the center of the street that he accidentally stepped in. You follow trail after trail. And in the distance, you hear the sound of a bit of laughter coming from the fifth house down the row two streets from the marketplace. Sure enough, there is an old rusty weather vane, and as the wind picks up and the sky threatens a bit of thunder, it continues to squeak overhead. In the basement, below this old stone house, you hear laughter, deep and boisterous. Man, blood, Blood. Filth. The Grey says. Agreed. And the Grey will motion at you to let it down. Do you set her down on the ground? Um... If, if Ilyun is carrying her, I wasn't sure if she'd leave Teresa because uh, Teresa has... I think caught. I think she left it to you to help with the tracking, so I think cool. she would have given the rat gray to you. I think, I think you. Ilyuna, like let let her sit kind of on her shoulder um, as she went because she 
she needed a little bit of guidance, but a lot of it was just like, oh, hey, the signs are obvious. <laughs> and so, yeah, she'll, she'll like, lower her arm to the rat and climb down. and The rat will climb down and scurry over and will scurry directly past what you see is a very thick cellar door bound with chain on the outside. Hello, me. The rat looks out from behind the side of the building and squeaks at you. Are we doing this quietly? If you want subtlety, you ask the wrong person. Hmm. Squeak. Is, is she squeaking like in a follow me this way sort of way yes she keeps looking around oh. the side of the building uh, allow me and i'm gonna go up to the chains um and i'm just gonna break them okay just... i want you to give me a strength and stamina roll to try to break these strength and stamina it is a feat of strength at least according to vampire revised um awesome i spend a point of blood for potence okay that's gonna be two automatic successes for you if i'm not mistaken Right and yep, and that will be. Uh, what's the difficulty of uh, difficulty on this? Hands? Will, with probably difficulty eight. All right, that'll be five successes. Okay, uh, the rat is going to like look at you break those, and you are going to reach down and shatter these thick linked chains uh, I... in your bare hands. They're oh. going to snap after you. And it'll just quietly walk back. Scroll. The rat will look up, and with your be with your feral speech still on, you will hear it say, "There was another way around the corner, but that works." Oh, well, <laughs> Alyona was gonna follow, but then was like, mm -hmm. "Oh, you just broke the chains." Okay, cool. <laughs> it's I could fine. I want to have okay. I want to. And as we descend into the basement, I just want to come out of character for a moment and just say there will be a content warning uh, for scenes of abuse and uh, scenes of, of blood and uh, some mild torture in the next scene. Um, viewer discretion is advised. So, as we are popping back into this. So are you trying... just a real yes. question before we get going. I'm trying of to course. pull up the blood pool thingy. So, uh, how long does it take be... to quicken something? To quicken something? It is, is yeah. reflexive. So cool. you can spend a number of blood points equal to your generation. You are uh, eighth generation, which means that you can spend three per turn. Okay. Um, so if you just take a moment outside to buff your stats, you can raise all of your physical stats on a one-for-one one expenditure to six. Mm -hmm. You can raise them as far as ten, but you have to keep track because every stat that is above six reduces by one every three turns. Yeah. So it's a lot of, a lot of little nitpicking to keep track mm -hmm. of. Uh, we are using the rule as well that if you want to heal and attack, you risk losing the blood because nobody ever uses that rule in any vampire game I've ever played, and I want to give it a try. Sure. If you, um, if you I will, we always use that rule, let me know in the comments. Huh. I will uh, buff to six in strength. Okay. Yeah, I'm oh, gonna... Uh, let, let me double check. Uh, <laughs> is it strength? Is dex and brawl to hit? or? It's dex and brawl to hit. Okay, I'll do uh, strength and dex then. Sounds good. Yeah. yeah, I'm right. gonna also do. Uh, I'm gonna do Dex to six. Okay, so beefing those up. Uh, Bastien, Renal. No. Okay. You're, you're good. <laughs> All right, sounds good. And how does that oh. work exactly? Just spend equal to one the amount for one. of points. Yeah. Mm -hmm. One for one. And it's for the scene. It's for the scene. Yes. Uh, now you have uh, you are uh, ninth generation, right? Eighth. Okay, so eighth is ninth. three. Ni oh, yeah, you're the only ninth. That's right. Ninth is two. Okay, 
So, um, you all stand outside, willing your your vitae into your into your body, strengthening, empowering yourselves. There is a shattering noise a moment before as Reynald pulls the chains apart as if they were lengths of string and yarn. And down below, you'll hear a voice say in, in a guttural low speak. Did you hear that? There's something outside. Shall I check it, my master? Yes, yes, go check it. I'll continue with this one. And you will all... Can you all of you make me a perception and alertness roll to see if you heard this, first of all? Um, I'll say this is going to be difficulty 8, unless you have something that allows you to hear more uh, more uh, accurately. Nope. Um, what I've been able to reflexively uh, turn on my aspects... Uh, if you think that you would have used it as soon as the chain I broke. would have, I, I yeah, because I, I you, Teresa would have. I was, well, I was focusing on the blood stuff, so but Teresa do it definitely six. would have. Okay. And that goes for anybody else with Auspex who think they would have been like, oh, breaking and entering. Better listen. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. What? Oh my right. god, my oh my bookworm dice game. Oh, these dice are so happy. I'm gonna get in a fight. That's four successes. Four successes. You will hear everything, okay. but you will also hear the sound of a whip. And a sob. A sob from a soft, lilting voice. A sound that you know well. The sound of sobbing. Everyone else, what'd you get? Two. Two successes is enough to hear that. The sound, at least, of the talking. Yeah, it just goes. Those oh, as well. Um, yeah, I, never mind, because I haven't confirmed them, but uh, is, e, is eavesdropping too general of a perception? No. No, it means that if you're actively listening for something on the other side of a door or something like that, that works for me. But it means that I like, didn't get any tents. I thought I okay. would just add. <laughs> yeah, that's a great thing to ask. Yes. But it, it would not work for say ambushes or something like that, right? Yeah, because that's what I have. I have intuitive for kind of detecting ambushes and traps and that kind of like mm -hmm. that sense. Totally which different. Is great. All right, so. With that, you'll hear heavy, heavy feet stepping toward the steps. Did you do something to the door? No, no, I did nothing, I did nothing, no, no. And then you're going to hear the sound of cartilage smashing as a boot comes down on someone's face. Huh. It's gonna be a while before the market's good again. Don't touch the fucking door. <laughs> A man sobs. Below the door, maybe ten feet down, you can hear heavy boot steps. I would like to spend a point of blood for feral weapons and grow Done. claws. You do that and all of you are going to see Eliona. Now, Eliona, can you please describe your claws? What's going to happen is her fingers are going to begin to crunch like bone rearranging, flesh merging. And what do they look like at the end as you watch her fingers snap and regrow? Um, they look like... Uh, like, almost like thick bear claws, but completely made of bone. Ooh, so they are beautiful. like stark white and just, but thick and, and chunky. <laughs> Savage. Did you I think anything less? Very similar. <laughs> All right. So what do you do? I don't plan to show mercy. Is anyone going to have a problem with that? I'm going to enjoy. I'll scout ahead to see if. Hmm. When commotion happens, the masters often are the first to leave out the back door. 
Good. Useful. I'll go in first, unseen, if I... If I can, assuming they aren't expecting guests. And then, after a minute or so, you can... Do what it is you need to do. Sound good? Oh, but not even a minute, really. Go. Bastion will go. Uh, all right, so um, are you asking everyone to avert their gaze from you so that you can use Obfuscate? Oh, I can't do it when I'm being watched. <laughs> <laughs> Perfect. All right. So uh, if everybody will generously look away, um, Bastion, can you do me a favor? Uh, because you're going to be interacting with the door, you are going to have to make a roll not to pop. So please do me a favor. I'm just double checking what that is in Dark Ages. So uh, make me a wits and stealth roll. Uh, I'll say difficulty of six. When... When the door opens, uh, if there's somebody there, I want to be ready to do something. All right. Ooh, five. Five. All right. The cellar door, thick, thick as a coffin lid, thicker still, thick as a, thick as a boat, thick enough to trap unwilling guests in the basement, opens. And down at the base of the stairs, you will see that there is a huge man looking down at a, an emaciated Hungarian man? A beard clinging to his face, one that hasn't been shaved in weeks. This man looks like he's half starved. His nose is flattened by a boot heel. His front teeth are missing. And this huge man is looming. He's already almost six and a half feet tall. Massively fat. Looms over this man, about 12 steps down. He's not facing your direction. Nor does he recognize the sound of the opening cellar door, since it was so silent. And I think at this point it would be a best option to switch into initiative. So, everybody do me a favor. We're going to make our first initiative roll of the game. It is a ten-sided dice, and you are going to add your wits and dex to this. And it's your current dex, correct? <laughs> it is your current dex. Ooh. Uh, so if we got to six, do we get a specialty like in mage Ooh. or no? So that is a house rule. Um, oh, that's I'm a house rule. Okay. It's a house rule of mine. Uh, I'm willing to allow it if you guys all want it. I don't but know if I, I can there... think of two more that quickly. Let's <laughs> yeah, say, no, let's I was say no say, for now. I can think. Yeah. Okay, cool. I just want to double check. So I'm like, I okay, can't. So... I'm not off the top of my head. Okay. And then... So it's 1d10 plus... Plus those stats. Dex and, and then wits. we don't roll it, though. We just roll the 1d10. No, no, you, you roll 1d10, mm -hmm. yes. Oh, okay, I got it, I got it. And then Roland has a dex and wits of... <laughs> they didn't... Did they not put his attributes in? They gave me everything but his attributes. Wow. Okay. That's that's Good. useful. Good job. They didn't forget on anybody else though. They <laughs> just did. What? The they really didn't want you. They really didn't want you to kill him. Okay, I'm going to assume he that he is slightly use. better than average, <laughs> which considering I rolled very low, probably doesn't help. Uh so, looking at the initiative right now, I <laughs> am seeing a lot of 17s. Um okay. I so, feel excluded. If, if you roll a 17, uh, I want you to do me a favor and roll a die to to break the tie. My God, you have three seventeens. I, I feel excluded. Like I mi obviously missed the memo here. Jen, how dare? How how dare? I also got a four. 
Okay, both of you roll off again, please. Three. Three! God damn it. God damn it! Ten. Nine. Okay. There we go. So. Okay, so the initiative chart is going to go Aliona. Then it is going to go Teresa. Then it is going to go to Bastian. Then it is going to go to Bruno. Then it is going to go to... Because Bruno rolled a 10. He's very, very, very good. Then it's going to go to Renald. And then it's Roland with his 8. All right. So. As that occurs... What are you doing, Eliona? The door to the basement has been opened and there is a large man leering over a hapless captive. I do want Bastion to be able to actually like accomplish something <laughs> and and like have the time to to move and uh take away is the way blocked at all? It is a straight shot down a, a rough shod stone stairwell of a dozen steps. Uh, pardon me, a dozen plus one. So 13 steps lead down into the basement. Okay, so um, Bastion so you're can all get th- by is kind of what I'm saying. Oh, yeah, he can. Um, and it's open on the sides here. Okay. There's no railing. This is merely just a... Um, a bunch of stones that have been stacked and mortared on top of each other almost. Many of them have rough cool. edges that it looks like people have caught themselves on over the years, stained with blood to this day. Uh, cool. I would like to um, grab this large gentleman. Okay. <laughs> and, and what's the guy's name we're looking for? I've forgotten. Roland. 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 Have you seen Roland uh, as I kind of grab his shirt? I'm not okay. attacking, attacking. I just want to grab his shirt first. <laughs> okay, that sounds good. So are you trying to prevent him from uh, raising an alarm as well? Yes. Okay, then what we're going to do is we're going to do our first multiple action of the of the Chronicle as well. So the way this is going to work, I need you to make me a... Why don't we say you make me a, a charisma plus intimidation roll as you okay. grab him. And then... That is going to be, so you're going to be that at a minus one die Okay. to that one. And then on the next one, you'll be a minus one die as well. And that will be, let's say, a ooh, a strength plus stealth roll to cover his mouth. Okay, cool. And that will also be at a minus one die. So a cumulative minus one, minus one. Uh, your difficulties will be seven and seven. Okay. And I can only spend one willpower between them. You can only spend one willpower between them. Only one per turn. Okay. Uh, now, technically, your second action occurs at the end of the round, but yeah. he does not get an action because he is surprised. On, cool. On a related note, you can spend more blood to buff your strength. My strength is six right now. Never mind. Cool. <laughs> All right. So, uh, I, we'll I, do, I'm okay. So, in... If he was not surprised, I'd make you do the other action at the end of the round. I'm going to let you just do both sure. of them right now for speed. Cool, cool. Um, then I'm going to spend a willpower on my first action, the intimidation. Mm-hmm. Sounds good. With the willpower, that's three successes. Okay, three successes. Sounds good. Um, you were going to like grab onto him with your claws, like holding onto his shirt and mm-hmm. make me the strength plus stealth. This will be a contested one uh, versus his strength. Uh, okay. So you must you must beat two successes. Four. Four successes. All right, now I have to ask, as you grab onto his mouth, are mm-hmm. you using your claws to anchor your 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 hand over it? Oh yeah. So like part of his ear just comes off like butter and a knife. Yeah, I have no concern for his welfare. He is going to his voice normally so deep and guttural is going to go high in your hand and you feel it tremble like a butterfly against your palm. 
Mm. All right. Teresa, are you doing anything right now? Uh, yeah. He doesn't need to... He doesn't need to scream for help. So Teresa's just going to craft his mouth shut. Okay. His mouth is presently being covered by Eliana. Okay. That said... Right. Um... There are other ways to prevent him from speaking. Um, also, Elyona asked him a direct question, so she, you may want to let him answer. Oh, that's fair. To. That's <laughs> fair. That is fair. <laughs> sure. I I'm all for it, but I'm just reminding you. <laughs> uh, okay, I would like to uh, make sure he can never whip another person again, so I would like to uh, make his hands one. Okay flesh skin to craft skin to skin sure that sounds great so this will just take a moment uh mm -hmm. so stepping down next to him uh i would like you to make me your vicissitude check uh so sure. that is, it going is to... a dex and body crafts roll i believe okay dex and body crafts and let's see is there an amount uh don't forget to spend a blood point oh yes Okay, so here's the deal. Um, you are trying to arrange flesh. So what you are going to do, actually, I'm actually going to, ch hmm. I'm going to change the role before you make okay. it. Because he's a very big man and you're trying to force his arms. Let's make that a strength and body crafts role. Because you're literally forcing the limbs together against his will. Okay. Uh, you can reflexively spend two more points of blood beyond your vicissitude. Yes. What's your strength well, at right now? My strength is two right now. Okay. Because I only did six to my dex. Okay. So I can I, mean, I can because I can spend three blood a turn, right? Totally. Now I so might I offer you another suggestion? Mm -hmm. if, so to force his arms and fuse them together would be like a strength related role. However, mm -hmm. um, you are new to this. So I'm going to remind you, you cannot craft bone. Everything on top of the bone is craftable, meaning you mm -hmm. could very easily draw a straight line across his tendons with your finger, permanently disabling one of his hands so that it could never hold something again. Oh, okay. Yeah, that would be great. Yeah. Yes, that would be wonderful. So that's, it's dexterous, and it is just mm -hmm. dex and body crafts. Um, it's a small target, so I'll say you're at difficulty seven. Okay. Let me just grab uh, 12 dice here. Okay. Uh, I'm going to spend a willpower. Sounds good. Uh, mechanically, the way this is going to be is at difficulty seven, and each success you make is going to reduce his dexterity score by one. Amazing. He is not particularly dexterous uh, to begin with. And um, yeah. yes, for those of you who are watching, um, I'm not trying to guide Robin, but this is her first time playing as Zemisi, and yeah. I found that the longer I played Zemisi, the worse my ideas got, and it's good to be walked yeah. through the initial stages of evil. She'll come up with great stuff on her own later. Yeah, well... Um... I don't have a specialty in body crafts. No, because that's just a bright in. Uh, mm -hmm. So that's only eight successes. <laughs> okay, what else do you want to do to him? Like... <laughs> You can you uh, can you can strip the tendons from his hand. Have you ever seen Nightmare on Elm Street 3, The Dream Warrior? No. Okay. Never mind. Asked nobody ever. Yeah. Uh, no. I would like to strip his tendons. I would like to seal his asshole shut. Because he is just full of shit. With that much dexterity, you can absolutely sneak a hand down the back of his trousers and do that. Um, you could reach beneath and you could smooth out the front while you're there. Sure, that sounds wonderful. Um, you, so you come away with a handful of flesh in your hand, mm -hmm. uh, particularly um, wrinkled and ghastly, um, and are going to be able just to toss it to the ground. 
I, I, I hold it up in front of him where Elionia is, ask him a question, and then just <laughs> drop it to the ground. <laughs> All right. Uh, Bastien, it is your turn. All right, I'm creeping in deep, trying to follow my uh, intuition as to where, like, uh, holy shit, I have to get out of here. Uh, exit might be. All right, make me a uh, make me a wits and ledger domain roll to think about where you would sneak away. Hmm. This is actually pretty good. And what's the difficulty? Uh, difficulty on that is going to be six. There aren't particularly, it's not a particularly large house. Five successes. Five successes. You are going to see that there is a door that leads up into a main room above around a stairwell. Um, that is actually, pardon me, in this type of house, uh, you will see that there's not a stairwell, but there is a ladder that leads up to the main floor. It looks like it is liftable. They obviously just drop the captives down here and don't want them climbing up. Is it open or closed right now? It is presently open. Oh, then I'll climb up. Okay. Uh, as you are there, you are going to hear the sound of whipping further on this floor. This floor is divided into three rooms. One large one that all of the captives stay in, as well as another room that holds, um, well, the way back up, as well as some stores like rock salt and other things that the they won't consume. But in the other little room to the side, as you are checking the ladder, you are going to see the that there is a man lying on the ground, very badly beaten, and will recognize there is a woman chained to the wall. She is bare, and you will recognize her with your auspects on as being one of the captives that you freed from the market. They re-caught her. Rivets of blood, rivers of blood, run down her back. She looks like she's going into shock. 23 lashes. And you will hear a voice at that point. I could have given you a much better life. And I think that's going to be your entire turn, is sneaking up, looking at the ladder, observing the situation. Cutting back across, um, Bruno is going to look down at the mass. <laughs> and he's going to try not to lose his mind. Uh, he is going to roll his willpower at a difficulty of 10. Uh, Sorry, Jen, you may not get the answer. <laughs> he's question. going to start. He's going to just start crying. In tear. Oh, oh, Jesus Christ! Oh, oh, Jesus Christ! Oh, oh, Mother Mary and all of the saints! Oh, oh, my Lord Jesus Christ! Oh, I'll tell you anything, demon. I'll tell you anything. I'll tell you what you think. He whispers into your hand. Where is Roland? He raises his hand and the bones flop like a fish on the deck of a ship. And he gestures towards the third room. Put it back. Put me back together. Oh God, demon. I only did what I was paid. All right, that is his turn. 
Uh, in the other room, uh, Roland is going to raise the whip and bring it down again. 24 lashes. Uh, the woman is going to faint. Well, so much for her. It looks like you are going back up, my friend. He looks down at the man lying on the ground. He is barely conscious, but at hearing that, he lets out a whimper. Meanwhile, in the basement, you are going to hear the soft sound of furred flesh crawling down the stairwell. And then there is a satisfied squeak as a mass of flesh and gore lying on the dirt is removed and begins to be pulled up the stairs by a very fat, happy rat enjoying a stinky, fleshy meal. <clears throat> Top of the initiative with Eliona. Um, do I get to go? Oh, oh yeah. Fine, fine, <laughs> Renald. You can go. You want... <laughs> You're not at 17. You can't be. You're not at 17. You're not you're part not... of the 17 club. I okay, accidentally. I'll, I'll back up. I'll back up. <laughs> That's fair. Uh, Roll, Roland and Reynald look the same on my initiative chart, unfortunately. So please, um, the the rat preempted this you is... using using rat celerity. Uh, so sorry about that. No problem, <laughs> Chris. No problem. What does Reynald do? Another reason why uh, Roland needs to go. Yes. Um, I'll uh, walk down towards uh, where Bruno is and. Uh, I'll look at uh, Teresa and Elion Eliona and I'm just like, I might not be too good with uh, Roland, but I can handle this one if you two wish to take care of this or take care of him. Enjoy. Eliona will nod. <laughs> and okay. I'll look at him. And I'll use dominate and say confess. That sounds great. You are at a difficulty of uh, two. Oof. <laughs> um, um, so five successes. <laughs> and I'll I'll just uh, listen to him confessing for a little bit as I bring out a dagger from the fold of my cloak. He is going to admit oh, to all shit, sorts of things. I love you, Chris. I love uh, it. He is going to start blubbering quietly and is going to start whispering his sins to you. Uh, he is going to admit things that I am not comfortable saying on stream that he has done and implying. Uh, let's just say he has a steady supply of pain that he can inflict on unwilling participants here. He does it because it makes him feel big and it's the only way he can... It's the only way he can get as a man... He says. Yeah, I'll uh, stay here with him while he's confessing. And, uh... He commit. He basically confesses to all manner of sin. Perfect. Top of the initiative, Eliona. Yeah, I, uh, I, I leave this blubbering mess of a pathetic mortal uh in the hands of the lovely green old and i'll move on towards where he had pointed sort of tried right. to point sounds good uh as you head that way you can see that there is a a ladder up with some stores down here and then a little hobble room off to the left with chains bolted into the wall looking inside you can see that there is a woman who has fainted against it and Roland is there, dressed in his finery, holding a short whip. He is reaching to unchain the one that is hanging from the wall. There is a beaten man on the ground you will recognize as one of those who was on the block earlier. Looks like they weren't able to make it out of the city. Um, I will, uh, move forward and without any real preamble, um, okay. sink my, my 
feral weapons, my ag claws, into Roland's back. Okay. That or fine, is going or to... whatever I can reach. <laughs> uh, his back's going to be right to you. Uh, please do me a favor. That is going to be a dex uh, plus brawl roll at a difficulty of six. Uh, he does not get any type of defensive roll. Cool. Uh, except for soak. Oh! This is literally the worst event true I've ever seen. <laughs> they didn't give him fortitude, guys. Oh, what? What? They gave him Auspex and Obfuscate. I guess they gave him the, the Venture Knight package from uh, from Second Dad. Mm, I wondered when he uh, tried to disappear earlier. That is five successes. Okay, so please do me a favor and roll me Strength plus four plus the bonus for your claws. Cool. Uh, four plus, it's only plus one bonus for claws, but you know. <laughs> okay, so that is strength plus five aggravated damage. Uh, do you want to spend any blood to buff your strength before this roll for the damage? Oh, yeah. Fuck it. I'll, I'll feed off someone after this. Um, hold on, I gotta... Make sure I'm not just fully draining myself. Uh, when do you make like hunger checks? Uh, when you are um, below usually like four. Yeah. Uh, I'll do two more. Okay. Yeah. Add two more dice. Ooh. Let's let's hope you never get potents. You're going to get potents very soon. I have a feeling. Possibly. I don't know. I'm terrifying. <laughs> this is this is the sound of. Uh, Eight, nine, plus four. Uh, Thirteen dice? I'm just hearing a blender. <laughs> Give me a sec. Oh boy, here we go. Do one subtract from damage in this. Uh, ones do subtract from damage. That's what I thought. Okay, cool. It counts as like a bit of resistance through like uh, your meeting bone or something. A bit of bit of gristle. Yeah. A big fat point, uh, coin purse gets in the way. Mm hmm. So wait, wait till I finish my sentence before reacting. But okay. I had seven successes. And two ones. <laughs> okay. <So> five successes. <laughs> Perfect. Uh, five successes. Uh, he is going to let out a howl of pain as you bury your claws in his back, tearing through him, exposing bone and organ. There is a sloughing sound as one of his kidneys falls to the floor, emaciated and red. He doesn't bleed so much as he singes, as parts of him begin to ash away from your cut. He lets out a scream, and with that, now I can actually play the other music. He lets um, out a Kelly. Yes. Um. I typed it like right after I uh, like finished my turn, but um. Yes. So obviously, uh, all I did was move, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, but I could have activated <clears throat> uh, Obfuscate. Sure, Obfuscate like multiple one. powers. And um, for the silence of death, mm -hmm. uh, it creates a zone of absolute silence for seven meters. Okay. So if you would have liked to have activated that, I think that's totally fine. I, I had uh, a feeling did... screaming might happen. Does that happen at, um, do you have to spend a point of blood for that? Uh, there's no, no roll? roll and it doesn't mention any blood. Oh my God. And it doesn't mention, um, Oh, if you spend two blood off. points, uh, and five turns of concentration, the silence remains even after you leave the room and last until you will it to end. That is amazing. Um, fantastic. All right. So yeah, we can absolutely say that. So he, he screams in silent horror. Uh, as you rend into his back. That is fantastic, Bastion. Um, Teresa, back behind, 
you see Eliona dart into a side room. What do you do? Uh, following Eliona up. There is no sound inside of the room, and you you take a step forward and your old ears begin to ring slightly as you step inside of the barrier of silence. Turning the corner, you see Roland throwing his back in an arch of pain. Eliona's claws just surging through his flesh. What do you do? Um, I would like to, um, I would like to, I would like to take his eyeballs and his testicles and swap places. Okay. Uh, well, he's wearing clothes, so that'll be a little difficult, but I'll just increase your difficulty. Why don't we go ahead and, uh, let's... Fair. I, I didn't know if, like, you were describing Aliona was ripping into him, so I didn't know if he was somewhat I mean, he's exposed ri- ripping into at his that point. Back. You could take his kidneys. Back. Yes. Uh, no, why don't you go ahead... balls and his eyes, because uh, he's thinking. Okay, that sounds great. Uh, go ahead and make me a dexterity and body crafts roll at a difficulty of eight. Okay. Spend that blood. Um, can I reflexively spend blood to up my dex by two? Yep. Sweet. Give me two more dicey wicey. I mean, you guys are going to eat Bruno in a minute anyway, probably, so. Oh, yeah. we're monsters. <laughs> we don't talk about nom nom. Uh, okay, that is three successes. A difficulty. Three eight. successes. Okay, uh, that is going to be enough to reach around, uh, reaching into his loose-fitting robes because he is very fashionable. It is his downside. In the end, you manage to cup what is there, pull it, and pluck, and in a single motion, you replace those ghastly eyes. He would scream if he could. Bastian, it is your turn. I'm... <laughs> um, does it sound like there's anybody in the room above? Like, di- directly? like within It does not feet? sound like anything because you've done Silence of Death. Oh, right. Hoisted um, by your own petard. I, my, my petards always get hoisted. I peek my head up. Okay. Um, you Let's are going to around. see, uh, you are going to see that there is a large man, uh, sitting there, like not as big as Bruno, but a decent sized man sitting at a small table. He has a pike leaning against it. Looks like a bodyguard or a city guard of some type. His skin is, um, a bit more tanned than the average person around here, probably of mixed blood coming out of the east. He's poking at a bit of porridge right now. Okay. That's my turn. And I'm going to turn around and sit back on the ladder. Okay. And that sounds good. Um... Wow, they really don't say that you can soak any of that, too. That's great. Um, huh. I'll have to double check that later. Uh, okay, uh, it is going to be Bruno's turn. Bruno is going to start talking about his childhood uh, and what drove him to this. He thinks that it the, the evil got inside of him through his father, who used to do things to him that are unspeakable. He's crying at this point. Um, Reynald, what are you doing? Just listening? Uh, no, um... At this point, um, I'm going to ask him, um, do repent your sins and accept Jesus Christ as the one and true savior in your heart. And then I want to, uh, I'm going to drain him. Okay. All right. So chomping into him, you may easily refill your blood pool. Would you like to save any for your friends or are you just going to drink it all? Um, I am going my plan is i'm going to get just take a few out a little mm. bit and then i'm going to stab him um so that he has a visible wound and bleeds out a little bit um okay. so he, he will be dead and going to meet god now that he's repented um and uh but if anybody wants to <laughs> have the rest then all good <laughs> perfect perfect <laughs> 
<laughs> okay, that is God damn it, Jen. <laughs> Yeah, I feel Jen. like this our, one's worth um yeah. in our it is. In our private chat, Jen just said Jen, please, my knife is please. Yeah, please, Jen, you <laughs> earned it. My knife is called the Lord. Do you accept the Lord into your heart? Oh God. <laughs> God damn. Consent is okay. important. <laughs> it's it true. Is. Okay. Um, you are going to uh, you are going to do what you must. Uh, and uh, you are going to deliver him to the grace of God. Uh, he will not even resist as you bite into him and the kiss takes over. He will be unable to do so. Uh, meanwhile, in the other room, it is finally Roland's turn. Uh, Roland is going to panic uh, and is going to do the one thing that he can do, and that is roll charisma plus intimidation. Uh, difficulty equal to um, I need to know... Ooh. Okay, you just clawed me. You just did that. Uh, he is going to turn around. I'm going to spend a hurt the more to affect you both. Uh, please, what is your highest wits plus courage roll? Or wits plus courage pool? Oh, wits plus courage? Eight. Yeah. Okay, so I'm at Seven. difficulty. Okay, I'm at difficulty yeah. Oh, yeah, eight. eight. Okay. Uh, Does then... he get anything less for my... Well, he has, he has wound penalties. Um, dread gaze. Yeah, that's just he, his difficulty. <laughs> that's yeah. just his difficulty. So hold on. Uh, he is. At he can a gaze minus. at us he makes through eye his contact testicles. He from just where has to move his eyes. Yeah. He, ah, he, he, he spreads his legs. No, uh, he can't dominate you without <laughs> eye contact. Unfortunately. So unless you're looking <laughs> oh at my you. god! I was Beautiful. inadvertently great. I didn't even know that. Okay. Always. So. Always ask the storyteller to double check what their generation is when they try and dominate you. That's true. Um, okay, so he has, uh, I'm going to assume he has presence of three because they didn't give me a stats. Uh, then he has, or charisma of three, and then he has an intimidation of none. Okay. Um, and, wow, this uh, guy. he has, whoever built has, this character statted him poorly. <laughs> he has yeah, five cool. health levels, which means that he is at a minus five right now, Jen. Okay, he's gonna Yay. spend a wound. He's gonna spend a. Uh, he's gonna spend a willpower to ignore wound penalties. Uh, so he will have. You know, I'm gonna spend a hurt them more and say that he has at least presence for or uh, charisma four. So now I'm rolling charisma four at a difficulty of eight. I got one. I got one. Okay, uh, so uh, with a hiss, he lowers his fangs, turns, and hisses at both of you, and you are going to, it's not going to be particularly powerful, but both of you are going to be cowed by the sudden emergence of his beast. Uh, success indicates that you are cowed, um, and however, that does not mean, it basically means that you cannot attack him. Um... So each success detracts. So uh, the way this works is um, you are cowed by him and, and well, actually, I guess they can still attack him. It's just that you're at a minus one dice. Huh. <laughs> okay. Uh, that he's going to try to scare you off. Um, and it is not going to be particularly useful. Um, Gray You're got not a scary when your eyes are your testicles. <laughs> no. I don't know. If I saw that, I'd be pretty scared. I'd be pretty scared. <laughs> right. I'd be pretty scared uh, if I hadn't just seen someone do it. I'm more scared yeah. of them. <laughs> so, uh, Eliona, it is your turn. Oh, cool. Uh, so, if, am I just minus one died to attack him? Uh, you are... Um, if you just attack him, you're not even minus one die. Oh, that was only okay. it was you're only minus one because you split your pools the first round. No, but the dread gaze. Uh, being oh cowed. yes, part of me. Yes, you are minus one for being cowed. You feel yourself. <laughs> you feel your beast kind of lean back and try to escape the situation, but you're angrier than your beast. You're cowed, yep. which means you have to say moo while you attack. <laughs> Um, 
I think in the face of my beast feeling this, Elyona's response is to scoff because he didn't make her run away. So <laughs> obviously this is nothing. Uh, no. And uh, just go pathetic and try and um, slash him with her other hand. <laughs> All right. Go ahead. That is a Dex and Brawl roll, please. Um, it's still going to be difficulty six, um, and he is going to attempt to dodge because he still has ears. However, uh, he spent a willpower to... Okay, so that means he had a split action, which means he got that. He has, uh, he has a dodge. He actually has points of dodge? Oh, wow. How wonderful. Hmm. Um, he's, a, he's definitely a coward uh, NPC from... <laughs> which is interesting because we don't have dodge on our character sheets. But I know right? that that's, Oh, sorry. Well, like, it's mind athletics. you, it's a second edition. Yeah. So yeah, um, exactly. it's his athletics in this. So I will have to do... To, so he has two successes to dodge out of the way. Cool, cool. And how many successes did you get? Oh, I was just rolling it. Um, I'm difficulty six, you said? Difficulty six. Five successes, and I wish I had a specialty, but... <laughs> okay. Uh, so, please roll me strength plus one plus two. So, strength plus three for your claws and the extra successes. And I'm not minus one on damage because of Dread Gaze, correct? You are not minus one on damage as far as I know. I'm going to assume you're not. It says dice pools, but I'm not going to consider damage a dice pool for this purpose. I'm probably wrong, but I don't care because I want you to roll many dice. Let me preemptively roll my fortitude. Listen to all the dice I'm rolling. So many. Well, I, I didn't botch. That's it's good. So many I dice, it, the sound just goes to, to white noise and beyond, and I can almost hear nothing. Okay, mm -hmm. here we go. Uh, four. Okay. As he screams and snarls, you feel yourself overcome your beast. Tell me how he dies. Um, Eliana reaches out and just grips his throat in the middle of the throat and rips out the front of his throat, um, which probably then comes the rest of the neck and decapitates mm -hmm. him. <laughs> he dies. Collapsing and rotting to his hundred years of age. The body hits the ground. Upstairs. There is no noise. Teresa, is there anything that you're doing while you see him collapse? Um, there are other people in chains around us, right? Yes. There are at least cool. two people in this room and others in the in the main room hiding in the shadows. Uh there are they are they uh awake or passed out? Uh one of them, the woman that is chained to the wall, is beaten to the point of uh where she has passed out. The man yeah. is on the floor um incapacitated with pain or crippled with pain, but still conscious. Okay. Hmm. Does he look like he was watching? <laughs> Uh, he does look like he was watching, but his eyes are very glazed. Okay. Uh, cool. Uh, Therese is gonna go and try and, um, uh, like, break the chains. Try and free them. Um, th they're, um, inside of... You don't need to break the chains. Oh, I guess there's keys. Wish. He was holding keys in his hand. Mm-hmm. All right. Okay. I'm just gonna grab the keys. All right. You can unchain her from the wall. She slumps to the ground, moaning slightly in your hands in pain. And the man looks up at you. 
And do you speak... You have lingua franca. Mm-hmm. He speaks German. And you just hear him look up at you and with a broad, broken-toothed smile, his lips nearly fused together by blood and sp the split of punishment, he will mutter, Enga. Uh, you Das ist ein Engel. Angel. You. This is an angel. Teresa chuckles to herself. She's not going to correct him. Uh, All right. You free and him. She will. Yeah, she'll free him and... Uh, start helping them out the door mm -hmm. uh and correct me if i'm wrong but it's 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 good when vampires eat other vampires right or no, uh, it no really we need them either very bad no. it's a crime it's, it's very crime. bad it's, better oh, it's to a crime kill. it's a crime okay it's better to kill the chat is correcting my german but this man is near catatonic so i'm assuming we his didn't german see is not anything perfect. it if you want a snack we it depends on the say. clan it depends on the clan. Depends on the clan. That's right. You said he withered anyway, so... Oh, yes. There uh, are no living vampires here. You cannot diablerize a vampire that has died. Yeah. You have to so diablerize them through the point of death, and then yes. you take their soul. <laughs> yes. Correct. All right. However, as you are uh, getting people... So, yeah, I'll people... start shuffling them away. <laughs> out the start door. shuffling them away. Um, as you're doing that, we cut upstairs to Bastion. Bastion, what are you doing? I've lost my rat friends. Oh, never mind. Here he is. There's only one guard up here? There's only one guard eating porridge in the silence, not realizing why it is so quiet. I'm going to... <laughs> Be toes and get them. Okay. You bite him. His blood tastes slightly of cinnabar. Cinnamon. You've never really tasted spices like that anyway. But you've heard of them. You imagine what they must be. And as you drink him down, there is only silence. And he will faint in your arms, his head going straight into the porridge. And as he does... There will be a flare of light ahead of you. And a man will be stand... No. A being will be standing on the other side of the table. Neither man nor woman. This... This being has long, flowing blonde hair almost down to its waist. Wrapped inside of the most beautiful golden armor. Wings blood red spread out around the table. The being, the angel, weeps blood as it looks at you and speaks into the silence with a voice that can pierce any stillness. You have participated in murder. You have participated in the death of those who could have been turned to the light. Lo, though ye freed the slaves like the Israelites before. I'm... <laughs> Silence! You lower yourself to the level of curse. I have. A moment later, you let your silence fade. Teresa, after helping them out, you follow the scent of blood up the stairwell and find Bastion holding his head over a passed out man. What do you do? He's just saying, I have, again and again. 
Sebastian. What 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 did you do? This this man is he alive? Is this man alive? He is alive. He is drowning in his oatmeal, but he's alive. Actually drowning in his oatmeal. Mm -hmm. He's face down in his oatmeal, having collapsed okay. from the kiss. Teresa will t put bring his head up, uh, and then just yeah. kind of put an arm around Bastion. What did you, Bast, ba, what, what did you do, Bastion? No one that was killed was beyond repent tonight. A slave master. Two slave masters who whipped, failed. tortured. Could have. Every. All of the living can. Can change and bring good. They can't. Not everyone can be saved. The no dead. How long you give them? The dead cannot be saved, Teresa. Then why do you fight so hard? It should be better if you're not if you're not worth save if you're not able to be saved. You're dead. In the matter of speaking. I've been given this gift so that I might save others. How? You're naturally prone to hunt and take. How can you be expected to save when you're ingrained to take? That's the sin of mankind. Vestigial evil left within us. <laughs> we are but bare bones after we die. And those bones are ugly. Meanwhile, outside, Renault. After Teresa freed several of the captives, there were others around the room. Did you free them as well? Yeah. So what is Renault doing now? Uh, Renault is, uh... Renault is telling the captives to scatter and to take what they can and then he's going to go up and uh, take a look at uh, what happened to Roland you see a rotting corpse on the ground at the back room of the basement good the most atrocious visage imaginable. I would like to mention something. <laughs> yes, Eliona, I was just about to ask what you're doing. Because once Teresa took the the captives and I was left with this corpse, um, I know you said roughly how old he is, but roughly how rotted is the corpse? Uh, he is about a hundred years, so he would have aged up to, to normal at this point, and he was embraced uh, in uh, he was embraced ninety six years ago, ninety five okay, years ago. Okay, so so probably most. 
I'm thinking like like <laughs> lovely descriptions. Uh like papery skin kind of Yes. Attached to thing, but anything that isn't wrapped around bone is probably kind of gone. It or it's just completely desiccated. Yeah. You could easily slough it off the bone. Okay, cool. Um Can I uh, so I, I decapitated him. I would like to take his skull with whatever's attached mm -hmm. and um, his penis, if I can, back as yep. a gift. You can take the skull. <laughs> okay, cool. Yeah, uh, that falls off from my hand. I'm like, well, <laughs> you could take a hand or a rib, but uh, you as you no, I'll as just take you. A skull. Okay, you can easily take his skull. The fang's still visible. Uh, please add Roland's skull to your character sheet. Cool. Will I do. <laughs> expect to see that during Gehenna. Um, maybe. It's, it's partly proof uh, to bring back to Shaharzina. All right. So, so she uh, couldn't that, be here with us for in this that case, Renald, that is what you are going to see as you look into the room. Her reach down and pull the skull clear from the rotting corpse. A successful hunt. Very successful. And I think that is the moment <laughs> that I think we should call a game. Right there. Good call. Cool. Before we do that, uh, of course, Teresa, you can snack as much as you'd like. I would also like everybody to make me some humanity rolls. Uh, so uh, let us just go through the list. I'm going to start with Teresa. So Teresa, um, you mm -hmm. did callous violation of another person's hands, uh, casual violation. Uh, what is your humanity presently? Uh, my humanity is still six because I took out okay. my so that's uh, uh, that's level two. Conscious. So it's the difference yeah. between them. So two. Three, four, five. Uh, please make me a conscience roll. Difficulty 10. So it's just the conscience? Yes. Cool. Now, is it for... I've always wondered, is it just cumulative or is it for each sin individually? Right? It's for the greatest sin, I think. Uh, okay. Yeah, you're right. It is. You're right. So for the greatest right? sin... Uh, I rolled a ten, a seven, and a two, so I failed. Okay, uh, you are going to lose a point of one of your virtues or a point of humanity. Cool. Bye, bye. Self control and instinct. Pew. All right. Next, let's move to Reynald. Reynald, uh, that is going to be the planned violation of another. Uh, that is what is your humanity? Five. Okay, that is only going to be then uh, three, four. Uh, that is only going to be a difficulty of seven. Oh, for me, uh, uh, eight. eight? That'll be six for me, because I have okay. King of Shadow. Perfect. Difficulty six. Yeah, I got one success. You got one success? All right. This needed to be done. It was the only way to save his soul. Down okay. to Bastien, uh, the impassioned violation of another, the planned violation. You, you came here planning to kill this man. So you are part of that. Um, so what I would like... Um, is for you to uh, what's your present humanity at seven uh only uh six okay so uh you why don't we go ahead uh you are going to make me a conscience roll at a difficulty of nine but you're at minus two dice because of your visions mm -hmm. so let's see what happens Difficulty of nine. Oh, do ones take away? Uh, ones do take away, but you can't botch. But I can't botch. Okay. Uh, minus one is one. You still have one success at nine? Still have one success. Okay, so you are going to find a way to rationalize this and try to learn from this in the future. We know tens don't count as two, so... They do not. Fail. Yeah. Okay, so you fail. So lose a, a point of humanity or a dot of one of your uh, not-courage virtues. 
All right. And finally, Eliona, uh, this is going to be, um, ca- I'm going to say casual violation of another is going to be where you are. What's your humanity presently? Five. Five. Okay. So that's going to be a conscience roll at a difficulty of uh, two, three, uh, nine. A fail. Okay. Congratulations. Lose one. All right. So with that, you have managed to destroy Roland, removing him from the plot entirely. And we will resume game with you exiting and returning back to make your preparations. Congratulations, folks. I was not expecting you to do this tonight. <laughs> um, can I confirm one thing just so that I have it written down for next game if I need to? Um, Absolutely. I had... Strength eight, so that mm-hmm. six turns later, once I did that, those are gone, right? Yeah. But uh, strength six and dex six, how long do I keep For the that? scene. For the scene? Okay. So they will be basically gone by next yeah. game. Yes. Okay, cool. And you can also hunt in the meanwhile if you'd like to as well. I would love that. <laughs> yeah, I'm going to want to wanna hunt. I have I use seven blood. If, if you're that quick, fight. if you're quick, there's Bruno's still has some blood. That's true. I only took two. Uh, anybody, anybody who wants to slake off Bruno, the man was very large. He still has eight points of blood. You can slurp uh, seven points. The more he bleeds out. So uh, cool. Yeah, you I, will, take, I will. Stay. You could easily take six of it by the time you get to him. Yeah, I'll take six. <laughs> All right, cool. You are going. How to much drain was him how was the other guy that um... the guard? Yeah, I'm, I'm a, you can you can probably take six off of him as well. Cool, I will for sure do that. Is it planned to murder if it's a vampire? Yes, it's still ending a life. Well, it's still killing. It's why they define it as another, not yes. Um... <laughs> Absolutely. Mm. All right, so. Uh, with that, hey folks, thanks for tuning in to this episode of Vampire the Masquerade, the Transylvania Chronicles. Um, everybody here, uh, the chat bought you three experience points. I'm going to give you two. So go ahead and take a total of five Whee! XP for the night. Uh, and with that, we are going to be making our way to Transylvania. It's going to be a great time. So, hey, thanks for watching. If you like what we do here, definitely give us a follow. If you're watching on Twitch, give us a sub uh, if, you, if you'd like to on Twitch. But definitely give us a sub on YouTube because I love watching those numbers grow. We're going to do something real special when we hit 10,000 subs on on youtube and um if you are listening to this later on podcast because this is going up on our podcast when we have uh four or five episodes in the can so we've got some backlog uh definitely give us a like and a review and i'll do my best to include your name as a character npc coming up um fantastic guys you did a wonderful job this game i love your crew and i love that i was totally surprised by what you're doing i expected us to uh get more than one page through this and uh and we didn't but uh, but for it's good reason, good. at least. For, for good, good reason. reason yeah. I hate this guy. Hey, you know what else yeah. is a good he reason? He deserved uh, to die. <laughs> he absolutely did. And hey, if you like what we do here and you want to support us directly and financially and have the means to do so, Dork Tales is powered by Patreon. If you'd like to join the Patreon and get a bunch of additional content, like access to our series Hunter the Vigil Summons, uh, Mage the Ascension Zero Sum, and so much more, uh, up to uh, up to six months early, in the case of Alien, is going to be like nine months early, uh, go and check out patreon.com slash dorktales. For the price, actually less than a cup of coffee these days, uh, you can help keep the lights on in here. And when we hit 175 patrons, uh, we are going to have a new game that's ran by uh, one of our main Ages, Christine is going to run a Regency era D&D game and at 200 I, I don't know maybe I'll run a, another mage game or something else um, there are also modules and things that higher tiers get which will be coming out very soon as well as a behind the scenes podcast plus if you donate enough you get to get your name at the end of the episode like our divine producer my mom hi mom how's it going uh, our demonic producers Bricarius and Shulton our wizards of the Patreon Tammy the Forever Cleric the Ink Goblin Sorcerer Sanguine and our own Kelowna Curd and our high council of the Patreon which originally was known as the princes of the Patreon in Vampire the Masquerade fashion and that is Tammy Karen, Dustin, Amberthist, Raven with Bobbles, Karasha Urquhart, Chef Eladeth, LaRuke, Mike Baxter, and Iridian. 
You are all amazing. I could not thank you enough. So I won't even try. I will just keep trying to put out the best content as possible. Thank you so much for supporting us. And thank all of you for watching. Uh, players, anything else you want to say before we head out? Yes. His. No, thanks for joining us. It's a blast. It's yeah. a blast. It was so I have an to say experience. This, it was uh it was, it was great. Months. I'm yeah, five experience worth of fun. Uh and I am going to enjoy my very twisted path to describing things to do to people horridly. Horridly. Ball of vision. All right. <laughs> Good night, everybody. We ball. <laughs> See you later, Ooh. family.